I love dodgeball, but yeah. I'm also really good at dodgeball. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't make it through that sentence. <laughs> I'm, I'm exactly as good at dodgeball as you are. If you need to feel good about yourself, you can pay $200. Matron goal, I'll play dodgeball with you. <laughs> I stepped out of my own gym shorts during a dodgeball game. That's how bad I am. Interesting. I pantsed myself during a dodgeball <laughs> game. God awful movie 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because masochism is funny. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath will be unable to join us tonight, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Oh, thank you, sir. May I have another musical? <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing, I have had surgery and stuff my first day back to work. Eli's like, you should watch a Christian musical on your first day back to work. Thank you, Eli, for that. <laughs> a Christian music jukebox musical, oh, my friend. God, <laughs> Jesus. And also joining us for that lovely experience is veteran guest masochist, science communicator extraordinaire and host of the Talk Nerdy podcast, Kara Santa Maria. Kara, welcome back. Thanks. Oh, look, I sound happy for a second. Yeah, what right, happened? right. I was, I was, you, I was <laughs> I so taken myself. aback. I was just so ready to defend us and our way of making a living <laughs> against your hatred. And I was just, yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> weird. Through the vibe off. Yeah, right. So tell us, Kara, what will we be breaking down today? Okay, so no lie, but Eli literally forgot to tell me the name of the movie I was supposed to watch. She just kept sending me all caps text messages that only said Christian musical. And I was like, I hate you so much. And so he sends me the link to the Google Doc about a, a week ago. And the title of it is A Week Away. Right. But he sent it to me a week away from recording this. <laughs> so I have no idea. So I'm like, what movie am I supposed Who to watch? Who is on first What's base, going though? on? <laughs> right? Eli goes to bed early because he's lame now because he has a baby. Right. And so I like, Facts. I email Heath and I'm like, Heath, what am I supposed to watch? Think Jeebus, he answers his emails late at night because that's when my dumbass realized the title of the movie is <laughs> A Week Away. We watched A Week Away. All right, well, consider yourself lucky, Garrett. This is the first instance in recorded history where Heath promptly responded to a communication <laughs> of any kind. So <laughs> truly, <laughs> truly, we have cracked the code. We really did dodge a bullet. Ooh, he likes me more than he likes you guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm IP doxing. I'm cloning your IP so that I can get answers from Heath moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> we have been running to planes, and I have gotten slower answers than you got from Heath then right to your email. <laughs> 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 All right. So, Eli, now I have to steer things back to the movie we watched. How bad was it? <laughs> well, if you loved High School Musical, but the stakes were too high and the songs too related to actual human experience, <laughs> you will love this movie. I, I don't know if any of you have ever been to a mega church. But you know how that Christian band leader at a mega church oh, yeah. has to like do that weird recitative thing in between songs? Yes. Like, how are we all feeling tonight? Yes. <laughs> okay, it's, it's that. It's Christian band leader recitative, the musical. <laughs> Is that a real word? <laughs> I don't think so, but I can't I say for sure. For opera. <laughs> Anytime I hear a word from Eli for the first time, it turns out not to be a word, but you know, hey. Yeah. Uh, so, and but tough we but should fair. point out tough but fair. The, <laughs> you you did misspell best in the best worsts later, so you know. <laughs> yes, I did. So, but we should point out that so this is on Netflix a week away. It, there is nothing that outwardly identifies this as a Christian movie on Netflix, right? This this movie does the surprise Christianity gambit. Like here is the description in its entirety. Quote. In this uplifting musical, a troubled teen takes a leap of faith by attending summer camp and unexpectedly finds love, friends, and a place to belong. So they're being coy about it, right? No, but this is overtly Christy when you actually watch it. Oh, yeah. It's all the way Jesus. So the hope here, I think, is that mom puts this on for six, seven-year-old kid without realizing what it is, and we get to evangelize to secular parents with it. Yeah, right? for sure. Very much has that subversive Christianity feel to it. So other than that, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Best worst plot? I mean, 
No, it's not. You guys have made me watch some terrible movies. I'm I'm channeling <laughs> Jimmy Johnny Laser. What was his name? Laser Us. Yeah. This, is, <laughs> this is definitely not a worse plot than that. But did this movie even have one is the question. I don't know. Like, if it has a plot, then the plot was, well, that was pleasant. It's like, <laughs> yesterday happened. Yeah. That's like what this movie is. Yeah. Yesterday happened. It has... A temporal dimension. I think that's about as close as we can say. So I don't even know if I'm going there, right? Because I had best worst temporal setting. When the fuck was this movie? (laughs) I know. Right? So it it seemed like every major actor was given a different decade to pretend the movie was happening. And George was clearly in the 80s. Avery was in the 90s. Will was in the 2000s. The movie was set in the modern day. I think. (laughs) Yeah, very, very hard to tell. Yeah, I'm going to be revisiting that as something of a theme as we go along. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm going to go with best worst blooper reel. Now, it's way at the end, and it's a little bit of a spoiler, but we should let people know that Todd Packer slash champ from Anchorman, David (laughs) Kocher, is that how that name's pronounced? Ketchner. 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 Is in this movie. Uh Uh-huh. And... At first, when I saw him, I was like, oh, I'm so disappointed David Ketchner is in this movie. The blooper reel reveals just how much David Ketchner fucking hated being in this movie. <laughs> because... I was wondering that the, <laughs> the whole time is full of these sassy teens going, yeah. like, <laughs> oh, gosh, I messed up my lines of David Ketchner being like, we're losing the fucking lights, Sean. <laughs> we we're losing the fucking light. When I said two takes, I meant it. <laughs> yeah, that was honestly the high point of the film right there. All right. Well, we still haven't quite talked Eli out of singing his entire review for this flick. So we're going to need a minute to you know, present him with some more charts and arguments. But we'll be back in a flash with all the, oh, shit, I forgot we were going for musical that is a week away. Carrot, doctors get urine samples all the time. Nobody ever asks you what you're doing with it. There are just so many reasons why the answer is no. Mean. You're mean. Hey, is guys. You are. How's it going? Oh, hey, Noah. Um, New outfit? Yeah. 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 You know, I just figured this would help you stand out around here in the old workplace. Now, what to leave an impression? You know? Well, a chicken suit will do that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, who's that guy in the chicken? Oh, that's Noah. And the people will be like, wow, interesting. Hmm, chicken <sighs> suit. I mean, Noah, if you want what you wear to stand out in a good way, why don't you just try Cuts Clothing? What's Cuts Clothing? Well, I'm glad you asked, because in 2016, Cuts founder Steve Borelli set out to create clothes ready for every occasion the modern man faces. He started by reinventing the t-shirt. The end result, what GQ magazine calls the only shirt worth wearing. The signature buttery soft Pika Pro tri-blend tee. It's a bold new take on a classic design combining the ultimate blend of high-quality cotton polyester and spandex. Ooh, that does sound nice. Yeah, and way less itchy than this chicken suit. Yeah, I imagine it is. Each piece of clothing is designed with custom-engineered fabric, expertly graded for the perfect fit, arming you for every challenge and opportunity. Well, but Kara, is it just a lifestyle or is it just clothing? It's not just a lifestyle. It's not just clothing. It's office leisure apparel for the sport of business TM. Get 15% off your first order by going to cutsclothing.com slash gam. That's cutsclothing.com slash gam for 15% off the only shirt worth wearing. All right, Kara. You know what? I'm losing the chicken suit here. <laughs> uh, You were wearing a tux underneath the chicken suit? Yeah. Well, of course, because like if you have to go somewhere fancy, you can't wear a chicken suit. Of course. Right. So about that sample. Still no. Mean. All right, everyone. Welcome to the first writer's room meeting for a week away. Hooray! Praise his name. (laughs) Now, as you know, we've been lent the very best that 2021's Christian music has to offer. So the goal is to weave those songs into a narrative that the whole family could enjoy. Amazing. What songs are there? Oh, let's see. Uh, We've got Best Thing Ever. Good enough. Um, our God is an awesome God. Uh, so, so wait, I'm, I'm sorry. Do we have just songs about generally having a nice time and being fond of God? Uh, actually, let me check that. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Yeah, that is, that is pretty much all of them. Okay. Okay. So what about a movie where people enjoy camp and, you know, talk about how much they like God? For 
the whole movie. Okay, so I, I don't don't take this the wrong way, but that seems kind of just saccharine and pointless. Yeah, I just don't really. Understand. Yeah. Okay. Well, then maybe. Oh, we sorry, should... guys, just got a text. Netflix just bought the movie. Ba- based on th- this conversation. Yeah, I wasn't even in communication with them, but yes, it appears so. All right, that's a win. I hate us. Yeah, me too. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start on some fun stop-motion packing video over a sample of what we can expect from this movie's original music. (laughs) Because, like, some of the, like, there's, like, four or five original songs in this. The rest of it is just, like, Christian earworms from the 90s and shit, but the original music is so terribly written in every imaginable way. The opening (laughs) rhyme of this entire movie is change and same. Yep. No, those words don't rhyme. Nope. It's like the lyricist is trying to get Noah to punch him (laughs) outside of a bar. (laughs) Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Change and same. Yeah, no, the second rhyme is this and forget. The third fucking line, they ra- managed to rhyme two and you. That's the first time they actually hit one, and it's the hinge of an eight year old's love poem, okay? <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is also where I sustained pretty tremendous trauma. There is a Pug of Pegasus sticker, and I got so fucking pumped that someone was going to be into pugs or pug of pegasuses or something like that. They will only be mentioned once more in the entire movie. There will never be anything pug related in the rest of the film. So I spent a tremendous amount of my notes in the early part of this film just being like, you can still turn it around depending on how much a pug of pegasus <laughs> in the rest of this movie. Wait, what is a pug of pegasus? A pegasus. Oh, it's a pug of pegasus. It's an animal that should be called a pugasus because that actually works, right? Just pugasus. <laughs> it's, it's a fucking flying pug. But Eli's decided that it's called a pug of pegacorn. Um, <laughs> and, and he's, and he's, he's sticking with that. He's, he's, yeah. Pug of pegasus is not roll off the tongue. Nope. Pugasus, okay. however. Well, yeah. It's a very important part of our brand. I've, one way or the other, I feel like we can sue. Yeah, exactly. This, okay. <laughs> So, yeah, and this is, of course, where we learn that David Ketchner, also known as that guy from that thing, is in the movie. <laughs> David Ketchner is so good, and this bumps me out so much. Like, what are the odds that he's actually Christian? Well, he's. this is not the first time we've seen him in one of our movies. Oh, <gasps> really? Yes. But also, you're Todd Packer. So who... Who's like, hey, can we get the guy most famous for humping Michael Scott every time he bends over for our <laughs> Christian teen comedy? You're so right. Well, and he's also he was also in Faith Based, which made fun of Christian movies more or less. So yeah, yeah. So mostly he's just a hoe bag. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. In like being so. in movies, yeah. that's fair. But that's like, fair. David, what did you run out of office money and Anchorman money? I don't believe you. Yeah, how do you run out of office and anchorman money? Yeah. No. Oh. There's only so much cocaine you can do a day, David. I don't I don't <laughs> you didn't need this. You didn't need this. You could have had just a regular yacht. It didn't need to be a mega yacht, David. I, I feel like David does not have a yacht. But you know, I'm I don't want to be judged. I don't have a yacht either. So okay. So but eventually we get paroled from those credits and we cut to uh, the, the most culturally a, a blind and aloof fucking opening you can imagine. It's a white kid running from a cop whose cop car he just stole, not getting shot, right? Yeah. This could not be more tone deaf if he ran past a black kid being beaten to death by different <laughs> oh, police yeah, officers. Jesus so, you're Christ. so right. You're so, so right. Bad. Yeah. I wrote oh in my, my notes, God. oh, this is one of those musicals they can't do a black reboot of like The Wiz because it would be three seconds long. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, and the cop is like such a caricature of a cop. He's like an 80s porno cop yes. with a big mustache. Yes. <laughs> it's so bad. Well, it's, and that really like that, so the whole movie, I'm trying to figure out when the fuck this movie is set, right? Because when we see people packing, they're one kid's packing a Ferris Bueller shirt, the safe Ferris shirt. Another kid's packing a Polaroid camera. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then we see that like that 80s porn stash on the cop. And I'm like, oh, okay. So yeah, this is an 80s movie. But then it wasn't. No, No, it was like modern day. No. But you know what's (laughs) weird? See, this is the thing because we're old now. But young kids dress like 80s and 90s now. Do they really? Yeah, yeah, it's like those are back in style. Uh, More 90s than 80s. So it's kind of weird that this had like an well, 80s flair. <laughs> I can see why you just skip over the 80s when it comes to retro. <laughs> I, 
was teaching some young people this year and one of them had a side ponytail and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so funny. Is that for the thing you're doing in class today? And she said, no, it's retro and vintage. And I said, fuck you. And then yeah. there was this weird pause where I realized I was talking to a child. Yeah. No, yeah, right. That's <laughs> so- Okay, so I learned I learned something about the, the youngins recently. When you guys are telegraphing that you're on the phone or you're like communicating to somebody phone, how do you hold your hand to your head? You do the pinky thumb extension. Pinky thumb. Pinky thumb, right? That the makes phone. Yeah, pinky thumb. no fucking sense to a modern kid. Yeah. They, young people don't do that. They do like their hand is like it's holding an iPhone. Yeah. And no. generally in front of their chin or some weird shit. Yeah. It's weird. It's like they hold their hand like a, like a half cup situation. And so if you do the pinky thumb thing, they're like, oh, you're old. Yep. Oh. oh God! I, yeah, I'm 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 just unapologetically fucking old. I'm I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm telling them I'm the reason I'm doing that is because I'm telling them I'm gonna call the cops to get them off my lawn. You know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Noah runs his finger in a half circle over and over again so that they know he's using rotary. Like he's. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. I just tell the operator what number I want to call. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but so, but so then this, this impossible, this fucking testament to white privilege ends with this kid who just stole a police car for a joyride being taken to the fucking principal's office for it. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. It was like he's in child and family services sitting in a waiting room and then they call him into this guy's, it looks like the principal's office. There's like kids art on the wall. Yeah. And he's like, we're going to have a stern conversation, child. Yeah. And they, they do that thing that Christian movies and kids movies in general do where they don't like don't know what a kid who bounces around foster care has been through. So like this rebellious kid who just can't stop playing his guitar has apparently been in 22 foster homes. Oh, my God. First of all, that would never happen. That's an awful <laughs> lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Also, like I worked in a group home. And at this point, basically, they're like the first thing he says is like, I'm sorry, but you stole a cop car. That's beyond the pale. We're going to have to send you to a facility and he goes don't send me to juvie and he's like juvie it is and then in the next breath he goes a group home is your last option and i'm like those are two very different things (laughs) yeah (laughs) juvie is juvenile detention that's jail right Mm -hmm. that's part of the criminal justice system a group home is a home that you live in (laughs) it's a home yeah and they're like, it's the last option. And I'm like, no, it's not. A group <laughs> home is actually a pretty good option. That's where kids who haven't been placed yet in foster homes go. I worked in group homes. Yeah. Group homes are pretty, pretty okay. I mean, they have their problems, but the worst option is a lockdown facility. Yeah, it's right. Not no, a group it, home. Not only could it be worse, it should be worse. But <laughs> that's when the stupid fucking plot of this movie comes stumbling in, right? Because, oh, he has to go talk to Kristen. And it turns out, that instead of going to juvenile detention, where he, again, very much should be going, they're going to send him to a summer camp for a week. And we should be clear, not a summer camp that specializes in, like, discipline or nope. foster kids. Or <laughs> nope. Just a normal summer. You have a choice. You can either go to juvenile detention. A.K.A. a group home. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> or, exactly. <laughs> or a camp that we assume other parents are paying for. Yes. Yeah, right? Yes. <laughs> right. Well, and let's, and let's point out that like this movie, they don't tell the kid that it's a Christian camp. They're just like, do you want to go to summer camp? And he's like, and of course, well, it's because it's this stupid fucking movie. He's like, I don't know, juvenile prison or summer camp. Oh, geez, this is a tough decision. <laughs> oh, and he actually turns it down at first. Yeah. He's like, I'm not a camp type. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> really, bro? Are you a prison type, though? <laughs> 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 oh, and this is the first point where I realized this is, this kid went to like an acting coach and the acting coach was like, okay, you're not very good. So you need to look sad and serious sometimes. Just raise your eyebrow really high. <laughs> yeah. like, what is yeah. with this kid's weird one eyebrow yeah. that's like excessively raised over the other one? It's like it's trying to escape the movie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so, but while he's brooding over the decision between juvenile detention and camp, <laughs> he starts a song. Yeah. Oh, right. And this is where in the middle of his fucking song, Kristen, that's the, the foster mom that comes in and, well, the one who's going to be his foster mom that comes in and 
takes him to the camp. Oh yeah, you just gave away the whole fucking movie. No, oh, oh didn't I though? <laughs> didn't I? Yeah, I gave away the the fucking the surprise ending. But she just pulls a Bible out of her ass and takes over his song, and she's like, "No, this is a Jesus song." He's like, "Really? This is it? Okay, we're doing a okay. Uh huh." She's the chick. Is she like in The View or The Talk or one of those shows? Like, I recognize her. She's oh. like a big actress. Is she? Yes. All right. To me, I have her constantly in my notes as like her and David Ketcher were hired on the same day. They were both told they were wacky comic relief. Yeah. And they just competed for it in the same scenes at the same moments for the rest of the film. I'm looking her up right now. A week away cast. <laughs> yeah, y'all, that's Sherry Shepard from The View. Okay. From, oh. Yeah, she's like a really big actress. Also, by the way, I'm looking at the cast. Guess who else is in this movie? Amy Grant. Yes. <laughs> oh, is she? oh, that's right. Yeah, I saw her in the um in the uh, blooper reel. That's right. I yes. never would have recognized that that was Amy Grant. Yeah. She walks across the background of this film for three seconds because <laughs> she loves Jesus and they wanted to use one of her songs. Yeah, Amazing. two of her songs, actually. Yeah. But yeah, but so this song takes us all the way to camp, right? So they, they sing their way onto the bus and they sing their way back off of the bus. It's all about how much they love their savior, Jesus. And this is sure going to be a nifty week. And that's when our main character, the troubled and brooding Will, sees the love interest. Da, right? da. Now, and we know because she's in slow motion, right? That's how we know that she's attractive. I don't get this love interest at all. Well, it's it's wonderful because this is a Christian movie, so they can't be like, he wants to fuck her. They will kiss by the end of the movie, which I guarantee you so many angry Christian dads and moms turned off this movie at that point. But like, <laughs> they can't do the like meet cute because they're just like, hello, friend, friendly, friend, 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 Christian movie. <laughs> so all the beats are weirdly paced as a result. Now, I will say, in defense of this musical number, I have been on buses filled with musical theater children now multiple times in my life. This number is pretty accurate as to what that experience is like. <laughs> there are impromptu kick lines. I yeah, no, yeah. All I wrote was, oh, yay, gay kids. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, finally. Oh, <laughs> let me hit you with this alt pitch. Troubled kid gets sent to gay conversion camp, but he's not gay, leads a revolution, helps everyone get out of camp. It's a much better movie. Well, so honestly, there were so many times when that's what this movie played like. You know, we'll, <laughs> we'll get to it, but there's a scene in there where I was like, oh, my God, that's where David Ketchner's going with this. But yeah. Oh, interesting. But yeah, and the other thing that I hate about the way we introduce Avery, the love interest here, is that we it, it, he just sees her. Right. And he's like, yep, I'm in love with her now. I have never spoken with her and have no idea who she is. I will pine for her and follow her around like a fucking dog for the rest of this movie. And she will then, of course, owe me affection for my dedication. Right. Also, like there's something about her like sits weird with me. I don't know what it is. She's adorable. She's not hot. By any stretch. Well, which but she kind can't of weird. because it's Christian, yeah. Right. right. Also, we're talking about children, so, like, you know, keep that in mind. <laughs> well, she's this. 22 when they filmed she this. She probably 21. is. Yeah. But here's the thing. Like, they cast Bizarro Zac Efron yes. to be the yes, lead. Yes, absolutely. Like, they he's did. clearly Bizarro Zac Efron. And he's probably, he he's playing a kid, but he's probably, like, 19, or he looks like 19. They cast this girl, Avery, who looks 12. Yeah, He looks like a sex predator. <laughs> it is a very weird dynamic because he definitely looks like a like an old teenager on his way to college. Yeah. And she definitely looks like middle, middle school. school is hard. Yeah. She yeah. does. And then, and then, ooh, and then we meet the bad guy who <laughs> is not bad at all. No. no. He's like a perfectly good bad guy. I love him. I think he's like, he's like what my friend calls um ugly hot. Okay. Ooh. She makes this distinction between ugly hot and hot ugly. So ugly hot is, you know how some people think that like Benedict Cumberbatch is, is hot, but he's like ugly. Right. So yeah. he's like ugly hot. And then, so like a lot of people think Bradley Cooper's hot, but I think he looks like a red faced drunk. So to me, he's like hot, ugly. Like he's Ooh. supposed to be hot, but I don't find him attractive. And then ugly hot is like guys that shouldn't be attractive, but you're like, he's weirdly hot. I don't get it. And Narwhal Kid is, is, is ugly hot is what you're saying? Narwhal Kid is ugly hot. He, he's like a mix. Okay. So for people who are never going to watch this movie right now, channel in your head because you need a visual image while we talk about this guy, a mix between Anders Holm. I don't know if you know who Anders in. Anders sure. is. He was in yeah. that show Workaholics. And, um, I don't know how to 
pronounce his name. Is it Domhnall Gleeson, the guy from Brooklyn? Okay, yeah, sure. uh, like the Irish, Scottish, British. God, I love him. He's so right. Doesn't he look just like a yeah. mix between the two? Yeah, of them? Okay. he acts like Anders, but looks like him. And I'm weirdly attracted to the bad guy. Yeah. Ooh. Well, and also, he, like you said, he's never bad in any way, right? Like he's like, perfectly nice. Right. <laughs> he's a when, when we meet him, he's a little self righteous about the mission trip to save the narwhals that he was on. But like honestly, like it's in terms of. Christian mission trips, like that's about as good as you're ever going to find, right? It wasn't oh, yeah. like he wasn't trying to convert anybody. Right. He was just trying to do some ecology. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, <laughs> our protagonist is a criminal who's been kicked out of 22 fucking foster homes. <laughs> <laughs> right? like, oh, yeah. This kid sure does talk about his environmentalism too quickly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, our hero is committing Grand Theft Auto and we're supposed to be like, you rap scallion. Yeah. You're right. And and so the bad guy's like, I I just got back from the but he said Arctic and that made me crazy to say Arctic. <laughs> I'm like, it's the Arctic, not the Arctic. <laughs> It's the fucking Arctic. But he's like, I just got back from the Arctic where I was working to save the narwhals. And Hero Kid is literally like, I thought those were mythical. What? What? <laughs> just what why are we Okay. Yeah, right. What the <laughs> fuck are you doing what a boring fucking myth <laughs> <laughs> not, not just a boring myth but also what a crazy thing to have your protagonist say yeah and then never acknowledge again <laughs> <laughs> hey are seals real yeah and we're gonna have the best summer ever. i know and then avery's like he's dumb i like him <laughs> Right, what yeah, is exactly. This movie? <laughs> well, and and the thing is, is that okay. So this is all apparently happening during the song, right? So, a, a, a fucking Will spins Avery into his arms, and he's about to say hi to her when the bad kid comes up and talks about his narwhals and shit. And we have this whole conversation. <laughs> it takes so fucking long that when they jump back into the music, we're all like, "Oh God, this is still the song, right?" <laughs> it's less coda and more reprise at this point. <laughs> I wrote, if this camp was trapped inside some kind of hellish loop where they have to sing this song over and over again and our protagonist has to fight his way out, this is a way better movie. <laughs> and as, so as they're walking away from this song, too, I just have to point out this line. Will says to George, the, who is the, the friend kid that he's coming to the camp with. The token black guy in the movie. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he says to George, he's like, hey, man, you didn't tell me this was church camp. And I'm like, hey, man, that's significant since he was sentenced to be here by the state, essentially. Right. That makes this illegal. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, You're right. That's a, a relevant thing. First Amendment violation. Yeah. That's the first one, you guys. We have whole teams of lawyers. That's yeah. what the ACLU like <laughs> is founded on. Like, what's going on? Yeah. The first pitch of this movie, he was a Muslim kid, but yeah, they, that one, that one got vetoed. <laughs> All right. So, and that, and this is where we meet. David Ketchner. Now, I was never, I never really watched The Office, so I went to this guy's IMDb page for so fucking long looking for something that I'd seen that he was in. I was there for, because he's in like 6,000 things. I was oh, like, yeah, okay. he's a very, very, very like well established working actor. Like, he cannot be this hard up for money. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No, his IMDb page is so long, I felt like I was procrastinating just going through it. So, yeah. But we meet him and Kristen, the George's mom, the woman from The View, comes up and says, hey, I just wanted to let you know that uh, this kid, Will, is going to be the main character of the movie. <laughs> I have, <laughs> have a file on him that may or may not be important later. Yeah, we'll just put it right here out on the desk for everyone to see. Yeah, <laughs> We'll just leave it right here. And at one point in their conversation, she says, what do you have planned for the tribunal tonight? And I oh, wrote yeah, my I notes. love that part. Sorry, I would like more details on the tribunal. <laughs> Can I get more details on the tribunal? Oh, okay. This movie will mention the tribunal, I would say, three or four times before letting us know what it is. It made me very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's it's better than the worst thing you feared it was going to be, but not as good as the best thing you hoped it was going to be. Yeah, so. very fair. But of course, this scene ends with, so Will is the main character, huh? Are we putting him in the weird cabin? And they're like, yep, the weird cabin. So we cut to the weird cabin. Yeah, It's a cabin. It's just a regular fucking cabin. It's actually a really nice cabin. It has a TV. I never had a TV at summer camp. Yeah. It's like two people to a room. I never only had two people to a room. Well, sometimes it's two people to a room and then sometimes it's much larger as the as the plot needs it to be. But also like <laughs> the the TV is from 1978, though, right? Still, yeah. it has a TV. No, I'm, I'm with you. I don't know what you would do with the TV from that time. But yeah, that's watch uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Well, yeah, I guess if you got a, v, a VCR to hook up to it. I guess. <laughs> 
Yeah. If tacky stuffed animals, which is what they show us in the cabin, make a cabin scary, then literally every cabin I've ever been in is a horror movie. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait. To be clear, he doesn't mean tacky stuffed animals. He means tacky taxidermy. Like, yes. not like teddy bears and shit. Right. But still, like the, the walls of a Cracker Barrel are way more terrifying than this cab. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. As well as the residents. Yeah. We also, I, I didn't point this out at the time, but because Will doesn't want everybody to know that he's the criminal bad boy kid, which bullshit, man, as a fucking criminal bad boy, you wanted everybody to know about it. Well, so why you did that kind of shit. And also, he's barely a criminal. Right, exactly. Yeah. He's not even very impressive yeah. crimes, really, compared to me and Kara. Yeah, they're all like petty like misdemeanors. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> we've killed, kid. Me and Kara, we've murdered a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Come on. <laughs> Little racketeering, something across state lines. Something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but at any rate, so he lied to the other kids when he met him and said that he was George's cousin. And of course, that's supposed to be hilarious because one's white and the other's black. And how could that happen? But obviously, you could just marry somebody who is of a different race than you. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. it just, but, but of course, to this, in this movie's eyes, that's just, you know, a, a bottomless well of humor. That's wacky. <laughs> And then, of course, in this scene where we're checking into the cabin, this is where we introduce George's love interest, hot girl, but wearing glasses. So she's a nerd. Yeah. Presley Elizabeth Borsky. Oh, I like her. Yeah. He introduces her. She loves everything pug. So I was like, this is my favorite character in the movie. <laughs> and then he says she has seven and a half narrow shoes. And I was like, oh, OK, Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. Let's take it's it back. It, it did under. get weird. The foot fetish thing was weird. And like there were some like mommy issues going on. Like, I don't know. It was un it made me uncomfortable. Well, and like it was weird to introduce it and then never go back to it. Right. Like if you're going to make us that uncomfortable, at least that has to be a plot point or something. But yeah. And then, of course, they have the conversation where Will is like, well, I'm into that girl, Avery. What do I have to do to impress her? He's like, oh, you'll have to pretend that you're not you. <laughs> that could be the plot of a bad movie. Right? Yeah. Also, this is the point where I realized that Will has like a forearm tattoo for no reason. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, is it just that the actor had a forearm tattoo and they didn't want to cover it? Or are they trying to make him look like a badass? Because it's not a badass forearm tattoo. I can barely <laughs> tell what it is. Like, is it a feather? It's very unclear. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely looked like something from like the comic book that he really likes. I don't know. But <laughs> yeah, it's like there's nothing badass about it. It's just kind of like a cute sort of feminine forearm tattoo. And yeah. so yeah. you're like, OK, I get it. But like it, it's it doesn't further the plot no. at all. No, I I think, though, in the eyes of the people making this movie, that badassifies him, though. They, they oh. just, any tattoo is badassified. In their minds, right? It's, it, but, sure. but, okay. but of course, anything that was truly badass would be too edgy for the movie. So, right, right. <laughs> so, okay. So, but now George has dressed Will like a dork. So he looks like a Christian now. And, and they venture off into the camp where they have to like sign up for various events. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, <laughs> one of the activities, oh, one of the activities they are offered is zip lining and I literally would have stopped my notes right here in protest. This is where my microphone would click off and it would be the Noah and Kara show if they had chosen zip lining, but they do not no nope. play paintball. No, wait, why? Fine. Tell There's, me what's going on with you. Eli hates I don't want to talk about it. Zip lining. It's it's as part of his desperate effort to have a personality on the show. It's weird. It's it's a weird wait, thing. What, what is it about? He doesn't is he afraid of it? <laughs> Jesus. Is he it's okay. He's not here any, he's not here anymore. No, we can just talk about him like he's not here. Um, is he I don't get it. Is he afraid of it? Is it like is it like a does is there some sort of like rate like is I don't it talk like about it. a social justice problem? What's wrong I don't, with zip I, <laughs> I don't speak about it he's on air. He's too woke Kara. for zip lining. <laughs> no, I'm so confused. I I kind of like zip lining. I, I, does he hate me now? part of my dark and mysterious backstory. I never oh, that's about what it's lining. part of his dark and mysterious backstory, you see, yes. Oh, did he fall off a zipline once? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. First of all, that's a very funny image, and I'm very mad at you for putting it in everyone's head. <laughs> the higher I fall from, the funnier it is, and you know it, Kara Santa Maria, you know it. <laughs> so they don't zipline. They find no. that the girls are at the paintball. And here's where I have this like anger starting to well up in me because in every movie where they try to make the nerds, the nerds, they make them these like awful stereotypes, but it's very clear to me, and maybe this is because I'm a nerd, but it's very clear to me that they're by far the most interesting characters. Yep. 
even on accident. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and that the cool kids are like so utterly boring. So like Will and Avery are like, we're hot, but we're also kind of dumb and we have nothing interesting to say. And then the nerds have all these like quirks and they have like all these interesting things to say to each other and they're clearly hotter. Right, yeah. Oh. Like, let's be honest. They're both clearly hotter. Well, and not only that, but they're so much better at singing. <laughs> yeah, they are way better at singing and dancing and everything. And like, so here is where George is like, uh, I'm really into this girl Presley. And Will's like, why don't you do anything about it? And he's like, last year I wrote her a letter every day, never got around to sending them. And Will's like, well, maybe you should invest in some stamps. And I'm like, hello, what year is it again? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right, yes. Who sends letters with stamps? <laughs> when you could use stamps.com. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. What? <laughs> so, but yeah, so when they go up to the booth, George Heath flirts with Presley for a minute, which is adorable. Aww. <laughs> right. And again, it's, it's like, like you said, like the, honestly, the story, if the story is George and Presley, it's a much more interesting story. Wait, what is Heath's story, by the way? Can we talk about him while he's not here? Oh, good. Uh, not, not and stay on pace on the show. I don't think that's a long <laughs> conversation. <laughs> fine, fine. So, <laughs> but now it's time for another song. George and Presley are going to sing the duet of, you know, I really like them, but I don't want to, I'm too nervous to talk to them song. Okay. So this is one of the first moments in the musical where they have a Christian song that's like, God made you just the way you're supposed to be. But they're trying desperately to make it about the thing. So they'll be like, I don't know who I should be. And I don't know what I should do. God made you just fine. And it what it plays as, because they're trying to combat this plot with the actual lyrics of the Christian song, is that the reason they like each other is because they were created in God's image. <laughs> I love how Jesus made your dimples. I honestly, I think, I think this is an original song and that is what they're trying to say. I, I don't, oh. but I, I don't know for sure because everything is so dumb in this movie. <laughs> oh, at one point they're singing like they're doing that like very classic musical singing into each other's open mouths things. And I was like, come on, <laughs> someone start chanting fight, fight, fight. <laughs> Side note, people hate it when you do that at the first dance at the wedding. It is very funny, but they are not cool about it. Oh, yeah. So we listened to the, another one of these terrible fucking songs. And this is where we learn, of course, that George, of all of the characters in this movie, the actor that plays George has just a wonderful singing voice. And I, I was oh, yeah. like anytime he was singing, the movie like was actually pretty enjoyable for me. Yeah, like this actually is like a cut rate high school musical. Like I, I even wrote here, like, are the actual actors singing because they're not half bad? This would actually be not a terrible movie. It would be perfectly fine, like kids movie. But they literally spoil it with a bunch of random, arbitrary Jesus references that don't further the plot. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just like everything's normal and secular. And then they're like, Jesus. And you're like, why'd you do that? <laughs> right. Well, why'd you do that? Well, and also it would have allowed them to like use good songs instead of Christian songs when they were going out to like glee some shit here. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so then that song ends and the bad guy kid shows up again to talk random shit about how he can ski down the mountain faster than this asshole over here. Right. Like he's got to talk some shit on behalf of, of Team Blue. Wait, now I get it. I think they're trying to make this like one of those classic. Who's that director from that did all the 80s movies? John Hughes? Yes, this is like a John Hughes movie yeah. they're going for. Yep. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and he is just like all the bad guys in John Hughes movies. He's just he like is? slightly more confident than everybody else, and that makes him bad. Yeah, exactly. And like, he just has healthy exactly. self-esteem. And, and the fact that he's ugly hot helps, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's ugly hot. Oh, I'm in it. I'm in it. Yeah. So, but yeah, but this is where he's like talks shit about, he's like, you know, I'm part, I'm the captain of Team Blue. You're probably going to end up on Team Green or some lame shit like that. Oh, yeah. He's like, we're the apostles. Yeah. I the love Azure that. apostles. Yeah. Just once in these movies where they're like, we're Team Blue. Well, I'm Team Red. And gee, I hope you end up on Team Red. I want the protagonist to be put on the villains team a quarter of the way through the movie. Just like Harry Potter gets put in Slytherin. It's like, oh, fuck. I've been. Hanging out with that those really other kids that up the movie. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Well, but okay, but yes, now it's time to do the fucking sorting hat scene, which what you know the what tribunal. <laughs> why not add a little extra cultural appropriation as we go? This is so wildly <gasps> uncomfortable, right? Okay. So First much of, all, of this is wildly uncomfortable. He starts this by saying newbies rise. And can I just say, quick PSA, 
Whenever anyone says that, don't do it. That's never a good thing. There never has been a good thing after someone says newbies rise. Nope. And look, he's sorting hat them, as Noah said. And look, the sorting hat is problematic enough unto itself. But I definitely wouldn't be comfortable with a guy-based system, right? The only (laughs) thing worse than a hat creating a race war is a random dude being like, and you're in this part of the race war. You're in this part of the race war. Oh, not a random dude. David Ketchner. Yeah. David Ketchner, yeah. Dressed up as Mel Gibson. In Braveheart. And also, he's trying to do a Braveheart thing, but he refuses to put on a Scottish accent. So he just goes like, I'm David Ketchner. I'm David Ketchner. And I'm like, that's still your voice. (laughs) Well, and also the fact that he doesn't do a Scottish accent makes it way easier to interpret this as cultural appropriation of Native American rituals, right? Well, which mm -hmm. they do later, by the way, because they call the camp... Do you guys remember the name of the camp? Camp A Week Away. A Week Away, yes. A Week Away, which like is so racist and also makes no sense. Just call your camp A Week Away. Right. No, but they, yeah, right, right. But you have to change it so that it is like that. Again, that's literally textbook cultural appropriation. Yeah, like they, they Native Americanified, caricatured Native Americanified yes. a perfectly good call the camp a week away. It's a week away from life where we can all get together yeah, and do right. whatever the fuck we do here. But instead, they're like, a week away, a week away. And I'm like, fuck you. Yeah, <laughs> right. Fuck you. It's I mean, it's a Christian movie. If they don't work in the racism, they lose a star from Dove or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Pure Flix throws in an extra 25 bucks. Also, can we be clear? This tribunal is this color ceremony where they're like, you're on the blue team. They're all already wearing those colored t-shirts when they walk yep, up. Yeah, yes. it's pretty obvious who's going to be on which team. So yeah, but they they sort of been to three teams, team blue, team red, and team green. Will is on team green with George. And the love interest is team red. The bad guy is team blue. And then all three teams are going to have themselves a rap battle. Yeah, they are. And this is where, because like up until now, I was like, oh, like this is just a musical. And this is where the movie was like, no, 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 Eli, we belong on God awful movies. And I was like, yes, you do. Movie. Yes, you do. We're gonna, how many verses are you going to give each of these white kids? Three, three. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, movie. Oh, God. Yeah, no, given the stellar rhyming we've gotten so far, my expectations were super high for this one, but. At one point, uh, so they, they're doing couplets at each other. Mm-hmm. And at one point, the intro line for one of the teams is, you like our style. You like the way we rock. And I wrote in my notes, so help me God, if this doesn't rhyme with suck my cock, I'm turning <laughs> off this fucking movie. And they rhyme it with can't be stopped. They yes, suck yes, my cock yes. and they go for can't be stopped. Oh, come on. Like, that this is the most rhyme. white kid rap battle I've ever seen in my entire life. There is no eight mile at all in no. this. And do you, and at one point they're like, they're, you know, they're like trading quote insults. And the girl says, God loves us more. Yeah. Is that a legit Christian insult? Do they go it's around the, and be like, the God rap loves battle me. ends with a call <laughs> to jihad. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I am the chosen people. They all pull out machetes. Okay, Christian movie. I'm yeah. getting into this now. Right. Well, t- <laughs> you know what? Clearly, shit's about to get violent at Camp Oigo. <laughs> so we're going to pause to let tempers cool. But we'll be back in a minute with even more of a week away so if you could just mention to heath how fun bathing is you know i I know he really looks up to you i feel like i'm really the wrong person for this okay but could you try oh uh noah kara you do not want to go in there the the studio why not oh because it is rigged to explode why did you do that i specifically told you guys to stop planting bombs around me as a prank yeah, you did say as a prank. Yeah, and this isn't a prank. It's for my blenders. Your blenders? Yeah, I'm talking about blenders I wear. And you're going to be just as hooked when you see how awesome these shades are. I got my Natty Ice Limes X2, and they're perfect for tooling around town. But they're so cool that I had to walk away from an explosion in slow motion while I was wearing them. I mean, your blenders do look cool. Yeah, and unlike expensive big brand shades that you probably lost or smashed in the past, blenders are actually affordable. So you're not going to cry as much when the inevitable happens. Cool and affordable. And not just sunglasses. Blenders has prescription glasses, readers, and blue lights, as well as a snow collection with goggles and accessories. Okay, I'm sold. Where do I get a pair? Score 15% off your blenders purchase. Visit blenderseyewear.com and enter the promo code AWFUL 
VIP. That's blenderseyewear.com code awful VIP for 15% off. Blenders rocked with pride worldwide. Now, you guys want to walk with me in slow motion away from an explosion? Not really. Dude, we live here. See, this is why my explosions are prank based. Okay. Hey, podcast listener. As you may know, this month is Matreon. That's right. Once every couple of years, we take a few shows in a row to remind you that without your money, we can't have on amazing guests like Kara. Aw, thank you, guys. And Kara needs your money because she has cancer. What? No, I don't. Yep, that's right. She has super cancer of the bones. And of the blood. Yep. Okay, those are real things, but I do not have them. I do work in a cancer ward, so this is seriously fucked up. But without your money, she can no longer afford the medicine that keeps her alive day to day. That's right. She will literally die because of you. Guys, you don't have to do this. People love our show. And by pledging as little as a dollar, they get access to a commercial-free version of the show. Over 40 bonus episodes with reviews of movies like The Snyder Cut and Jim Kata. <laughs> Plus, they can go to Matreon.com and see all the fun goals for this year's pajama party. They can help us hit by pledging or upping their pledge by as little as a dollar. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? You're probably right. Yeah, I'm ashamed. <laughs> Can you believe we were actually going to use that money to buy you like a Christmas present this year? A Kara? really good one. I'm so ashamed. Yeah. <laughs> well, you heard them, everybody. Pledge what you can for my cancer medicine. Otherwise, I'll die. Nice. Of the, of the cancer I have. I want that nice coffee machine I told you guys about. You got it. Yeah. The, the white one. Oh, the white one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yep. And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open up the morning after the tribunal with David Ketchner giving the morning announcements. <laughs> Will wakes up very grumpy. This is it, this is so fucking random. He wakes up going like, I hate camp and I don't want to be here. It's like up, up until now, you seem to have been having a wonderful time. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> he, he might as well say at this point in the movie, I'm not quite convinced. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> for the purposes of this scene, I am quite grumpy. <laughs> But this is where we learn that there's a talent show on the last day. And oh, my God, so badly. I wanted them to get to the talent show and he can't play guitar or sing. <laughs> oh, that'd be amazing. You catch Eli. How many times do you watch these movies? Because you always make these references like this is the first time we find out about. And I'm like, we did. Yeah, right. <laughs> I didn't hear that. I didn't know there's a talent show until the talent show is happening. Yeah, yeah see. You get extra time with the movies when you're the one who doesn't edit any of the podcasts. <laughs> Did you notice that he, like the main character, Will, is wearing like an unreasonable amount of makeup the whole movie? I did not yes. notice that. Like he's airbrushed. It it reaches RuPaul's Drag Race levels it towards does. the end of the movie. He's, he's, he's airbrushed in a way that makes me very uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Cosmopolitan Magazine would no longer put this kid on their cover. Yeah. And too much. This is a movie trope, but it's also just a camp trope. And this is where I wondered, are there camps that start at noon? Because that <laughs> like <laughs> camp seems like it could be fun. And, and you know what? I'm going to start a summer camp that's actually fun. Good afternoon, campers. Welcome to Camp Bosnick. I see you all woke up uh, whenever the fuck you wanted to, because this is supposed to be enjoyable. Uh, first, some quick announcements. The fuck dome is being cleaned from 12 to 2, so do not go in there and try to fuck the cleaning staff. I mean, yes, some of them will stay till after 2, to get fucked, and that is confusing, but, you know, janitorial staff like to fuck too, everybody, okay? <sighs> All right, next up, lunch today is normal food that is fine, because if you can get together a kitchen, it's really not hard to make food that's enjoyable for lots of people. Like, people make good food in regular small kitchens. Why would an industrial camp kitchen, for some reason, be less good at making food. And finally, tonight, we will be doing drugs. Not illegally, or like behind a cabin in the desperate hope of not getting caught. We're just going to do some nice drugs in the woods, because drugs are fun, and they're especially fun in the woods. So I'll see you all tonight. I don't know that that merited a doodly-doo, Eli. I want to do drugs in the woods. Thank you, Kara. Uh, okay. All right, so drugs in the woods aside, we, we, we'll follow up on that, of course. But we, 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 we cut to them at lunch, and the food here at camp sure isn't very good. <laughs> I, don't wanna, I don't know about you. I don't much care 
we, 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 how many <laughs> one hour photo huts do you need? So <laughs> <laughs> what's the deal with airplane? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but this is where they start the five minutes chant where they play the exposition game with Will. Yeah, I wrote in my notes because it's called Five Minutes of Heaven. I wrote in my notes, does he have to jerk off for them? Because I would nail this intro. I would <laughs> nail this. <laughs> Hashtag Skeletor.gif. Like, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> or I would get myself kicked out of camp and not understand this game. No, we were going to ask your favorite color, man. Put your penis back. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the questions here... <laughs> Okay, so let me explain what's supposed to happen because I watched this scene three times. I watched the movie twice, but I watched this scene three times because I was so baffled by it. He's supposed to be giving incredibly charming and interesting answers. However, this is a Christian movie. Charming and interesting are against their religion. Yeah. So his answers are like, my favorite color is green, and he doesn't have a favorite book of the Bible. <laughs> Well, so, right. So, first of all, the questions are like they're doing a piece on him for Teen Beat. And also, <laughs> they ask his favorite movie and he says, Twilight. Okay. Again, when is this movie? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't I was know. like, are the Christians okay with Twilight now? Because when it came out, y'all yeah, were Yeah, they did not like it. the Twilight. Yeah, right. <laughs> Good question. But yeah, and then they ask him his favorite book of the Bible, and they have the whole humana, humana. Oh, I, do, I just, I don't, I do. Yeah. I'm like, come on. There is literally no Christian I've ever met that could give you a reasonable answer for that. Yeah. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, he, he pulls the whole like I could never choose because they're all so good. And one of the one of the characters is like, mm, "That's a great answer. I'm satisfied." Yeah. <laughs> and and then and then it's like thirty seconds later, and they're like, "Okay, you're done." Yeah, it's a sixty four second five minutes. Yes, <laughs> that's a great answer. No, it's not. If someone says they like Leviticus, they are going to murder you. They're in a food state. <laughs> No one who's ever said, I like Leviticus, is not about to stab you with a sickle. Ever. Oh, yeah. Ever. No, if, if, like, if, if I am dying for a second, I will say, like, Ezekiel or something like that, you know, and just <laughs> look at the look on their faces, right? He just stares Avery in the eyes, Song of Songs, and she just starts nodding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know. I'll uncover your feet. <laughs> 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 Book of Amos. What? <laughs> also, at this point, the bad guy is the one hosting this five minutes in heaven, hell, or whatever this yeah. weird mm -hmm. thing is. And he's, again, perfectly nice. Right. Totally nice. He's right. totally nice. Everyone's just really nice. He's not a bad guy at all. This movie confuses the fuck out of me. He's, he's making the new kid the center of attention and making sure that everybody knows that, hey, man, this kid is like from a, not around here and doesn't know you guys. Yet. Yeah. Let's all get to know him. Show him how much we support him. I'm a nice guy. Yeah. Well, and Will is a dick because it what the bad kid, Sean, his question is, are you good at sports? And then Will goes, well, if awesome is good, then yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, like, well, who you're wrote this movie. Jackass. <laughs> what a fucking dick. That's what you write for a cartoon character before someone hands them a giant round black bomb that explodes. <laughs> <laughs> But then, so right after that's over, David Ketchner's like, hey, excuse me, main character, I think we need to have a one-on-one. -on -one. And I, okay, so he, he takes him outside and he's like, hey, I noticed that your favorite movie was Twilight. And I'm like, oh my God, it is a gay conversion therapy camp. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> this seems so played like that's what was about to happen. <laughs> I'd like to pray with you, brother. But no, I was like, oh, really, movie? You're judging Twilight? At least people came to twilight okay who did you make come a week away <laughs> nobody that's who <laughs> <laughs> but yeah and by the way the conversation that they have is meaningless right like there nothing is exchanged oh like the entire movie well yeah true the only explanation for this scene is that these actors improvised it in front of a still running camera in the hopes of like getting crafty for the day. <laughs> I don't even know what scene we're talking about at this point. 
It's when he takes him outside and he's like, hey, I want you to know, I know your backstory, but it's okay and don't worry about it. And he's like, cool. That scene happened? We didn't even write about this scene. <laughs> I don't even remember this scene. Well, it's also the scene where they explain the the Owego way name. Oh, in, in case yeah, that's all I was up on That, that was yet. really what I was focusing on. <laughs> yeah, right. But that scene ends, everybody's filing out of lunch. They all have to stop and tell Will how great his answers were to the 64 64- second five minute game everybody is very impressed and this is where they have the whole like oh and we're all going to compete in the warrior games and team green is going to do better than team red ooh ooh and of course we have to bring that up so that we can dive into the whole he loves to blob scene oh Oh, this blob scene it's so gross So it's the whole scene where like somebody goes like, oh, I bet you're going to do really good on the blob love interest. You love the blob. And Will, not knowing what that even means, is like, I also love the blob and am good at that thing. Right. But the best part about it is related to the movie is it never pays off. Right. The thing is supposed to be (laughs) I love the blob and then he's bad at the blob. But he just like goes and tries the blob and he's like, yeah, that was kind of fun. Yeah. And then they never reference it again. No, no. They never compete. We never see the girl near the blob. Nobody else blobs. It's just an excuse for them to, she calls him blobtacular or blobtastic or blobular, blobby blurb. It's supposed to be banter. I think it's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be comedy and banter and it's pain. It's agonizing. They might yeah. as well leave the camera running while they like cough into their hands and shuffle <laughs> awkward back and forth <laughs> after the lines. Okay, but so, and here's the saddest fucking part of it is that this is all, the whole reason this scene exists. Okay, so the blob is one of these things that's like, a, you know, you sit on the one end of it and then I dive from really high and it's an airbag and so I launch you based on how hard I hit it or whatever, right? That's what it is. And we have to watch our main character get the guts up to jump onto it. Right. The whole reason we're doing this is because they wanted to use this Christian song called Dive by Stephen Curtis Chapman that was popular if you were a Christian kid back in the 90s, you may have heard. And of course, so they have to have him diving in order to like make the song make sense. Yeah, it is as though they rented a waterfall so they could use Don't Go Chasing the Waterfall. (laughs) I love it. Yes. This is my favorite part, the blobtastic part, because this song that they break into, they're literally singing, the river is deep, the river is wide. They're dancing in a lake (laughs) <laughs> that has a beach <laughs> and it only comes up to their ankles yep. yes uh, and the bathing suits that they have put these girls in <laughs> oh my friends you have seen more revealing tuxedos they are <laughs> my grandmother has photos of her in the 1940s in the Bronx showing more gam than these teenage girls oh but it's it's because it's funny because they do that throughout right they're like trying to dress the girls in such a way that is says sexy but not no, you know not so much as to piss off a single christian mom so yeah it looks like they were all transported straight from bob jones university or something yeah. <laughs> and yes there's so much unintentional innuendo in the deep and wide song right like, yes i want to <laughs> yes. go deep i'm diving in i'm o- over my head i'm just like oh this sounds like a ton of just fun straight to the clit oh i mean what <laughs> what the river water they lose the metaphor so many times at one point they go the river water is alive and i was like sorry guys what? the river water is alive <laughs> That's amazing. Like, not even like a subtle middle lyric. What? It's the end lyric of one of the verses. Oh, Jesus Christ. And then, okay, so then we go from there. We we cut to this. Um, We, we have to start the warrior games, right? We have to start the, the matches between Team Red and Team Blue and Team Green and shit. And we're going to open up on a dodgeball match between Team Red and Team Blue. <laughs> I hate dodgeball so much. I hate dodgeball so oh, much. I, I like. Dodgeball. I was like triggered by this scene. It's so aggressive. It's so like... It's so like sexist. It's just like literally an opportune time for boys to beat girls up. It's so weird. Everything about this scene is uncomfortable. That makes all my notes about, man, I'm sorry, Heath isn't here to comment on his favorite game. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, well, so here's the thing about dodgeball for me. I fucking love dodgeball because I'm little and I'm skinny and I'm fast, right? I was so goddamn good at dodgeball. It's the only sport like thing that I was ever the best at and I was so goddamn much better at it than everybody. Nobody could hit me and they were so pissed about it. I love dodgeball. But yeah. I'm also really good at dodgeball. 
<laughs> Sorry, I couldn't make it through that sentence. <laughs> I'm, I'm exactly as good at dodgeball as you are. If you need to feel good about yourself, you can pay $200. Matreon go, I'll play dodgeball with you. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll feel good by comparison. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so I stepped out of my own gym shorts during a dodgeball game. That's how bad I am. Interesting. I pantsed myself during a dodgeball <laughs> game. I actually can see how that would happen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then, of course, while this dodgeball match is going on, we have to further the love interest between George and Presley. So Presley is is trapped right she's the last one on her team and it's it's three against one all the boys are throwing balls at her okay so a little, little extra innuendo in the yeah. in the dodgeball yeah. ad too yes but george who's not even on her team or in this game he's on a different team leaps to her defense right to like try to jump between her and the dodgeball so she won't get hit but he's not athletic so he misses all three of them and she gets nailed in the face it's such a weird non moment, right? Because like the setup, you're like, okay, there are two outcomes here. Either George dives in front and takes all the hits for her. And she's like, my hero trophy, but I get it. Or Presley turns out to be really good at dodgeball and wins. And they went for neither. <laughs> yeah. They went for the hero fails and the damsel in distress still gets fucking pummeled. In yeah, the face. It's, like a, it's like a Russian novel. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best part of the movie to be honest yeah. well yeah but also that's the fucked up thing is that this movie is pretty sure this girl getting her face like seriously bruised by a dodgeball is hilarious yeah I know it's actually really sad yeah yeah but it is the high point of the film up to this point yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we cut to Presley icing her eye from the brutal sport that she was just forced to play George comes in and he can't bring himself to apologize because he can't talk to Presley because he gets all tongue tied and heathish. Yeah. He wants to be, <laughs> he wants to be cool. And the way he tells Will that he wants to be coolified is that he wants to be John Hughes. And I wrote in my notes, dude, those movies do not hold up. You do not want to be John Hughes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people out there using that as an innuendo for something very different, George. True. I want to go back for a second, though, because we're on George. George is trying to get coolified in the bathroom with Will. Mm. He's like, I'm too nervous. He's adorable, by the way. I like love George. He is adorable. Yeah, like I love him. But back at the table, Presley, who just got hit in the face, is like acting drunk weirdly. And Avery is like mean to her. Really is. Yes. Yeah. Presley's like, do I look OK, though? And Avery's like, you look beautiful. Your hair looks beautiful. And she's like, really? And she goes, no, it's actually really flat and frizzy. And then they both laugh. And I'm like, but it looks the way my hair looks when I work really hard at it. <laughs> like, it looks really pretty. Like, she looks really pretty. Yeah, and right. then she was just really mean to her. And then they both laughed it off. Like, this is why girls are all fucked up on the inside. <laughs> well, actually, there's an amazing, like, insider movie thing, which is you can't really do frizzy hair on movies because hairs are thin. So it, you can't just be, you either have to show the hair, like, poofing out or nothing. Mm -hmm. So the hair and makeup for this team did her hair and makeup normal, and then they were like, J -j 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 on top of her head, so it looks like nothing, right? It, it looks, looks like gorgeous. she's ready to go to prom. Yeah, yeah. she's ready right. for prom, and she's like, your hair is frizzy and flat, and and then she's like, ha ha ha, what a cunt. <laughs> right. I mean, it's literally the meanest thing ever. My hair is flat? What the fuck are you even talking? Fuck you. <laughs> I just fuck got you, hit in the face. Judgy. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> And you're not even the cool, like, why are you the lead? I'm prettier than you. I just wear glasses, so I have to be the nerd. I hate you. Also, also I'm such a better singer. <laughs> oh, and so, but then this is where George comes in and he's got to sing his song, which is, they didn't even, this is where they abandoned, like, well, I, I guess I didn't realize they'd already abandoned original music at this point because I, who the fuck knows about these other Christian songs, but this is the first one where, like, I recognized the song. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm looking up the lyrics right now. It's Baby Baby by Amy Grant. It's yeah. Amy yeah. Grant. That's why I recognize. So it is a Christian song. Well, OK, to be fair, this is not a Christian song. Amy Grant loves Jesus. And they were like, hey, right. Amy Grant, you've been touring the Christian music scene for the last 75,000 years. Can we use one of your good songs? And she was like, OK, <laughs> That's why she's like, put me in your movie and you can have the rights to my song. Yeah, exactly. Right. And at this point, he's literally out there with his gorgeous voice, you know, 
baby, I'm just glad you're mine. Like, just going hard on this girl. And I'm watching and I'm going like, I'm really confused by what's happening here. Yeah. Because she's not his at all. (laughs) He's being clearly confident. Like, this song has nothing to do with what's happening in the movie. Well, that's, again, yeah. They, yeah, right. And they had to do that over and over again because they just, these were the songs they had, right? So, but this right. this turns out to be just his imagination, right? This is how he right. wishes, he wishes he could be this cool. But again, it's just, they these are the lyrics they had to work with, trying to stitch that shit together into a movie 80 scene. I love, Eli, you wrote, there has not been enough pug stuff. You're still on it. Like, <laughs> they told us pugs. Presley was into pugs and she has not done anything or said anything. Well, you know? and <laughs> again, that's how fucking stupid is it that this movie is set up that she likes pugs and never has George, like, pull the trigger on that and give her, like, a stuffed pug or save a pug or something like that. Yeah. Nope. Dumbass fucking writer. Anyway, so it's time for another morning at camp. Go fuck myself. (laughs) Oh, there's that. This is where we open on the weird. Somebody shit in the pool, right? Is that what we were going for here? No, but the lake. Somebody shit in the lake. Okay, but there's always shit in lakes. Yeah, he goes, water sports is postponed. We're, um, we're cleaning. We're like, we're, well, cause we're cleaning it up. Um, don't worry about it. Water sports How is postponed. How much did someone shit? <laughs> I know that's a large body of water. That's the movie I want to watch. Is the guy, <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> right. Cause they say right after that, they're like, and by the way, the, we won't be having the bean dip anymore. Tee hee hee. Somebody. And then, yeah. Right, so somebody shit so much in the lake that they had to like bring in the hazmat suits and the biohazard team or whatever <laughs> and have that fucking thing decontaminated. And again, we we never go back to that. That's a throwaway joke in this dumbass yeah, movie. Yeah, it's just a little moment. <laughs> it's That's just a weird... The whole, this whole movie is just a series of moments that don't relate yeah. to each other. Right, yeah. fair. Well, speaking of which, yeah, because we cut immediately from that to... Will practicing on his guitar and Avery coming up and saying, hey, you know, we're well into act two. I figure, shouldn't we have this serious talk and walk scene by a body of water? <laughs> I wrote down, you doing your act three song? Because we're not in act three yet. <laughs> what song was this? Because it was actually, I really like this song. Oh, isn't this the song that like we end on? The, 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 this is the best thing ever song? Yeah, this is the best thing ever. Well, yeah. This is the best thing ever? What is that? The one he sings at the talent show at the yeah, end. It's no, a, this is a this is a cover. Oh, oh, right. No, we eventually go into yeah, oh, the, yeah, right. We're not the, there by yet. the sorry, end sorry. of this scene, yeah, hold, we, hold, we, hold, please, we'll get there. Yeah, no, we do <laughs> go into like the best song of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so we're there still. She's about to show him her secret garden. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Don't get excited, everybody. It's a literal secret garden. It's a literal <laughs> secret garden. Also, it's like okay, on their first date, they sneak away. It's supposed to, she's supposed to be watching the sunrise. The sun is setting soon. Everything about the scene is weird. Yeah, makes no fucking sense. They sneak away. There's no, it's like, what is even, it's just golden hour. And then they're like, shoot, it's golden hour. We need footage. And so Mm -hmm. they're like out in the woods and she's like, my mom is dead. We're going to, let's have our first date at her grave. Totally normal. Right, And, and the special place we used to take her when she was dying of cancer. Yeah, the little bench in the woods. My dad made her a bench in the woods where she could die. Yep. (laughs) Everything about this scene is so uncomfortable. Yeah. But they do get to some really close religious truths here because he's like, yeah, but I mean, you believe she's still with you, right? And she's like, yeah, I do. And he's like, but you don't have any evidence of that. And she says, almost perfect quote. Faith is believing things that feel nice without evidence. And I was like, all right, movie, if you're going to do my job for me, I'm going to get popcorn. (laughs) Yeah, no, she's she's very clearly, she's like, yeah, no, I'm going to heaven, so death doesn't count. And he's like, you see how that could be a dangerous thing to tell people, though, right? <laughs> Not You don't see that. Okay, you don't. I don't either, apparently. Okay. And then, then he has the whole, like, you know, you're so perfect. And then they have to have a conflict over that where she's like, no, I'm not perfect. And, and, and he's like, oh, I'm so sorry for saying you were per- perfect. Is this re- is this really my line? I don't. Oh my god, that was really weird. So boring. Yeah, so boring. I'm looking for a reason. <laughs> yeah, coming through the night to find my place in this world. Yes, yes. my yes. place in this world. <laughs> in this world. <laughs> it's so Christian. Like they've managed to make all the good songs not good. 
Yeah. yeah, well, and and that's the thing too is that because because look, Will is the cutest actor they have, but he but and, he's the uh, worst singer, right? Exactly. She's pretty good though, and the the truth truth be told, I actually kind of liked the arrangement of this song. Like there was like a cool harmonies and stuff. I actually did pause and and sing along. Okay, all right. I, I forgive you for that. Honestly, that I liked happen. their arrangement on "Our God is an Awesome God" that they do Ooh, later I did too. too. Yeah, that was, was that was pretty really solid. Good. Whatever. But it, and and that one we didn't have to have like these two singing the whole thing. The two weakest singers, they're the weakest male and we, weakest female yeah. voice they had in the goddamn. I mean, but they auto tune but... the shit out of them. Yeah, yeah right, but right. just in case you were going to like it too much, halfway through this number, they improvise dance jumps. Not not good <laughs> ones. They just sort of. <laughs> Run at each other. I wrote, wow, they are not good dancers. Oh, it was, and also it was so, because they, they, the whole fucking thing up until this point has been, they're like, I like to watch the sunrise from the lake. I like to watch it from my secret garden. Let's go watch the sunrise together. And then they run off hand in hand to a dock and, and it's sunset. Right, because that looks good <laughs> behind them, and it's just like yep. when the fu- the movie can't decide what decade it's in, what how days work in this universe where the sun. Go- yeah, but anyway, yeah, they they finally bring this musical number to a close, and then he, I guess he dunks on her about, "Ha, you are perfect. I told you because you did the dance jump. You did a perfect <laughs> jump." Yeah, I just wrote in my notes, Kara, next time we see each other, I am improvising a dance jump, so you better be ready to catch me. I have gained a lot of weight over COVID, so I need you to work out and be ready, okay? You know, back when I was Mormon, which I never, like, really fully subscribed, but I, you know, I was, I grew up in the Mormon church. I was born into the religion, so I left the church when I was 15, but when I was probably 13, 14, going into 15, I used to actually do like swing dancing a lot. It was like oh, fuck, kind of a thing. Yeah. And I really liked it. Hell yeah. It's like the one thing I liked about being Mormon was that we were like really into swing dancing and I did a lot of those cool dance jumps. So if you're willing, Eli, to actually switch roles, <laughs> I'll take you up on that. Mm, does that mean you jump and I catch you? Because that doesn't make any yeah. sense, Kara. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Think about the bit, Kara. What's funny? I fall off a zip line. Funny. I get hit by dodgeballs. Funny. I land on top of you. We both die. Funny. Yeah, like Kara breaks both hips. It's for Funny. the vine. <laughs> you gotta do it for the fucking vine, Kara. So all right, but so but anyway, there's their song and dance number ends because the fucking next scene klaxon goes off, right? <laughs> they're, they're like, we're be oh, we're being called to the next scene, I guess. Okay, all right. So they run, and this is where we have the paintball fight scene. Yeah. Which David Ketcher opens with an apocalypse now reference. Yeah, very topical. Oh, yeah, this is yeah. weird. Yeah. Well, also, it, so I don't know what the fuck they were going for here. He's like, he's he's doing the whole uh, apocalypse now. I love the smell of napalm in the morning speech, but with camp shit. And he says, and, you know, everybody remember to watch your six. And the woman, Kristen, says, yeah, watch for your six, six, six. And then they have the whole, it's supposed to be a comedy beat about where he's like, no, 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 not the. I'm not talking about the devil. And I'm like, w- she was? She was it's like seriously warning these kids to avoid Satan during their paintball match. Yeah, that was a whole weird thing. That was like she made a she made a Satan joke, but like a like a deadpan Satan joke. Yes. yes. What? <laughs> you ever be at a friend's house and their parents step into the other room to have a very obvious whisper fight? That's what happens in the middle of this scene. This is like, I, was, I wasn't talking about Satan. She was like, I know you weren't talking about Satan. I was just warming the children about Satan because it's a Christian movie. And he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was Todd Packer. Well, I'm on The View. Okay. Yes. (laughs) Also, they're playing paintball in an open field. That seems kind of anticlimactic to me, right? (laughs) Right. (laughs) I guess we shoot each other with these paintball guns. Man, we should have put some kind of like cover or something. (laughs) Obstacle. And this is what cues a montage of the Warrior Games. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. some of them are normal. But some of them are really bizarre. So there's tug of war, there's football, there's cornhole. Again, this movie was made for Heath to watch. Yep. But then there's <laughs> get as much pie on your face contest. Yeah, these were weird. And they're cutting back and forth between all of them. And I'm having, honestly, like some triggering moments because 
like, first of all, this camp seems really stressful. Like, it's only for <laughs> fit kids. Right? You know what I mean? Like, it's really stressful. It's, like, really competitive. Only, like, the most athletic kids are, like, people are nice to them. And then I'm just realizing, so they're playing tug of war. And I have this moment last night, because I'm watching this in the middle of the night, because I never sleep. And I'm like, tug of war? We used to play that in elementary school at field day. Like, it's literally called tug of war. And I don't know if it's because of the apocalypse now references or what, but like, <laughs> is that not aggressive and like not okay for kids? Tug of war? That's like really intense. And everything about the game is intense. They look like their arms are going to be ripped off. <laughs> right. It's well, intense. yeah. The, the, the game ends with you yanking the other team to, into submission. So, yeah, it is. A, and yeah. well, and the, but this whole scene is like it's got a very weird glorifying of war kind of backdrop to it. Right. Because we keep coming back to the paintball match and it keeps being like increasingly aggressive to the point where like you're like, yeah, probably not a good idea at all to put the, you know, kid with a troubled criminal past into this situation, right? <laughs> right, yeah. Let's just feed his aggressive, like all the negative coping mechanisms that he's developed over the years. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But then at the end of the paintball match, wouldn't you know it, it's all of the blue bad guys versus the two love interests. And the only reason I point this out is because the entire movie, I, I will never be able to describe this if you haven't watched the movie, the entire movie grinds to a halt while the girl tries to explain Mr. and Mrs. Smith to the protagonist. Oh, <laughs> yeah. so stupid. She goes, just like us, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And he's like, what? And she's like, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the Brad and Angelina Jolie vehicle, it didn't really work because their relationship <laughs> wasn't really established yet. And he had just broken up with Rachel from Friends. You, didn't, you, didn't you don't see it. And also oh, they're trying to kill each it. other, but they're, they have really hot <laughs> sex all the time. Just basically hold both guns in your hands. Just, okay. Okay. Yeah, there guns. are so many easier ways I could have gotten to back to back with guns. Yeah, shit. I'm sorry about that. But uh, all, of course, all my notes are just like, OK, this movie is post 2007. It takes place because that movie came out. She couldn't have known about it before 2007. <laughs> So that's it's after that. But yeah, they do the whole Mr. and Mrs. Smith back to back shooty thing. And that's like, that's the end, right? That's how it all works out. That's what we were all leading to with this. They, they, she ends up winning. Her team ends up winning the paintball yeah. because of their. And again, I want to give this movie credit where credit's due. They do back to back shooty thing. They defeat all the bad guys. And then she just turns and immediately shoots him in the dick. Yeah, that was my favorite part. Yeah. I was and like, like, okay, what? movie credit, credit. Yeah. <laughs> And David Ketchner's like, yes, my daughter. Yes. Yeah. yeah, right, right. <laughs> oh, and, and of course, we have to watch bad guy melt down a bit uh, because he's apparently saved narwhals for nothing here. God's not even going <laughs> to give him a fucking paintball victory. Do you have chariots of iron? You have to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. This paintball scene is as close as we're ever going to get to a movie like thing happening. So I'm calling that the end of act two. And let me give act three the hard sell here. Is it too late for this to turn into a slasher flick? We've got teenagers in a camp, don't we? What if I offered David Ketchner $18 to do some reshoots? Find out the answers to less interesting questions and more when we return for the Jesus-tastic conclusion of A Week Away. And in my dream, my mother is there, but she's huge, right? And she's eating my car, like she's taking the pieces off of it. Interesting. Tell me more. Uh, hey, guys, what are you doing in my house? Oh, hey, Kara. We were just trying out the new therapist gun you were telling us about. It's okay. Uh, it doesn't give a lot of response. Yeah, I mean, it does, just doesn't apply to all that much in my life. Yeah. Oh, God, you guys, it's not a therapist gun. It's a Theragun. What's what's a Theragun? Come on! You, you know, you and Heath have been milking it longer and longer. I'm just going to start interrupting when you do that. Okay. okay, but I'm still beating Marsh, right? Gu guys, the, the ad... Right, oh, fine. fine. Okay. Fine. All right. <clears throat> Theragun is the handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combo of depth, speed, and power. And it's as quiet as an electric toothbrush. Feel. Ooh, it feels like I'm being punched by a thousand tiny it men. It sure does. Whether you want to treat your muscle tension from working out, an injury, or just the stresses of everyday life, there's no substitute for the Theragun Gen 4. Yeah, actually, Theragun sent us a couple to try, and they were so good our wives stole them. But how do our listeners get theirs? Try Theragun for 30 days, starting at only $199. Go to theragun.com slash awful right now and get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's theragun.com slash awful. Theragun.com slash awful. Thanks, Kara. Hey, you're a therapist. I can talk to you about my problems, right? 
I think you're better off talking into the Theragun. Okay. Wow, 22 foster homes in 13 years? Yeah, I guess I've never just found a place to call home, you know? Did you really steal a cop car? Try to sell your school on Craigslist? I did. My rebellions are pretty wacky and prank-based. Well, I think a week at camp will Plus, I really- can't stop doing sex stuff to ducks at the local pond. I have problems connecting and trusting. Sorry, I'm sorry, you what? Yeah, whenever I start to feel comfortable somewhere, I close off or I no, I run away. No, 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 no. What I was I wasn't asking about that. I was the it was the duck thing. Oh yeah. Oh, well, I mean, come on. Nothing like a bill on your nipple to get you kicked out of high school. Let me tell you. That. Yikes. Um. Hmm. Unrelated. Do you guys know if the canteen here sells saltines? Yes. Cool. 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 We also have a water slide. Nice. I will check that out. I don't feel like that question was unrelated. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin our hero in a little uh, being friends montage with George. But once again, it's a Christian movie, so they're not allowed to do anything normal. Okay. <laughs> right? They jam on music and I'm like, cool, friendship. They watch a movie and I'm like, cool, friendship. Then they play with dolls and have a soda drinking contest. And I was like, man, life without sex is hard. (laughs) (laughs) It's kind of sad. You're like, I might be into that. No, I'm not into this. I think I only wrote, wait, what's happening? Yeah. Right. Fair. Well, right. So they, they don't like, so Eli eased you into it, right? He opened up with. They watch a movie together. They jam on the the movie opens up with the two of them playing dolls together. And hey, if that's your jam, that's your fucking jam. I'm not going to judge you for playing dolls, but it's a weird thing to open up with in your movie as just sort of the cliche two teenage boys making friends thing, right? Yeah, he's yeah. like, "Hello, Mister Godzilla," and they're like playing with dolls. Like, yeah, rah, 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 rah. yeah. Okay. At the very least, they should be jerking off back to back, right? right. <laughs> Is it really a camp experience. <laughs> If you're not jerking off back to back with your bro. They're also, they're trying to go for this like, like a hangover kind of vibe where they're just like badass cool bros in their camp thing. But of course they don't drink and they don't have sex and they don't do anything fun. So they're like drinking soda and having like mm-hmm. burp yeah. contests and like smashing soda cans on their head. Yeah, and yeah stuff. exactly. And like, what is this? Oh, and of course they're watching Ferris Bueller on a, that TV from 1972 because mm. they try desperately to inject some personality into one of their characters by having him have a movie he likes. And then they ask the other character what his favorite movie is. So stupid. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so we have the little friendship montage thing. And then we cut to that night. There's a big fire and they're having this. Wait, wait, wait. Like a campfire. There's not like the camp well, is not yeah, on right. fire. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just a regular camp. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just to be clear, a bonfire, over yeah. here in LA, that's very triggering. Okay, like, all right, no fair. fire. <laughs> <laughs> there is a contained, controlled fire. Tara's under her desk right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> having flashbacks to a gender reveal party. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, but so they're doing this thing where they're going around the room, and everybody's going to like kind of, I guess, testify or give their testimony or something like that. But they all, I love this so goddamn much because this is such an amazingly self-aware, unaware moment. Everybody has to start their little testimony by saying, I don't know much, but, and I'm like, okay, well, at least that's an honest Christian game. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is originally was, I don't know shit. And then you were just done. That was the original Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> I also love, so George's mom, she gets up, she does the heaviest Jesus thing. She's like, I don't know you, but God knows you. And I'm like, fun, big, big, a holy brother but then david ketcher gets up and he's like i don't know much like why i'm in this movie how could i run out of office money that was on abc every night (laughs) they still (laughs) run that fucking show constantly oh yeah yeah so and then and then they have the love interest avery she says you know i i don't know much but i know what my mother taught me and then she quotes the mother a character who we know died of cancer saying, my mom always said, God's up to something. (laughs) I don't think she meant that in a good way. (laughs) Yeah. In her case, it was deadly cancer. (laughs) Jesus Christ. And then she's like crying hard. Yeah. Like you guys, like she's like ugly crying. 
like hard. And he's like, God, you're so hot. Like there's a weird thing <laughs> happening. Yeah. She's ugly crying about her dead mom. He's getting like a boner. Like I don't yeah. know what's going on. And meanwhile, our God is an awesome God. He reigns. Oh yeah. From heaven on high. But it's kind of a weirdly good arrangement. And I'm like, shit, yeah, it I don't really like is. this song. I, okay. But so th- I'm sorry, but this is where we meet the hero of the fucking movie. Oh, yes. Tell, who? yes. I know you're who you're talking about. Who? Okay. So everybody like in the whole camp starts standing up to sing our God. Oh, is and an they're awesome doing the God? big, the Jesus hands thing where they're kind of like reaching to the sky and there's a scene, no shit, where David Ketchner is doing Jesus hands and I want to cry. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, but, but amid this entire crowd sitting right next to our main character who's, you know, trying to decide because like, I guess he's realizing that if I stand up and start waving my hands all Jesus, see, I'm in, right? I'm all the way right. in. I can't go yeah, no back and down a there. Turn, a turning point for sure. Exactly. And there's this girl sitting right next to him who does not give a fuck. She is not getting up. She cannot be bothered for this <laughs> Jesus shit. Blue and I hair. Love oh, is this a blue hair girl? Blue hair girl. Yes. Blue hair girl. Yes. <laughs> she is the hero of this movie. She's she so grumpy she will never <laughs> stand up she will never sing she will stare hatefully directly into the <laughs> eye of the camera for the entirety of this music number i love her so goddamn much and then so but then we get this whole song and we cut over to avery the love interest ugly crying and i realized i'm like oh my god that's the closest the young Christian girls are allowed to get to an orgasm, right? The climax of a song like that. <laughs> right. Oh. Uh, I see. Is there high? <laughs> is there exactly. So you think she like jizzed in her pants? I, well, well, no, I just think, I think that she's so sexually repressed that any type of climax whatsoever is very confusing in her brain. And right. upsetting. Yeah. They also, yeah. so they, the arrangement is pretty good. However, they do have to use Christian lyrics. So at one point in their love duet that's happening underneath our God is an awesome God. They Mm -hmm. ask the question, quote, is there a kind of love that God only knows? Ew. Thank you. I was like, Ew. <laughs> yeah, there's always, and I feel this, this is a lot when we get to this kind of theme where it's like love interests who like are finding each other under the light of Christ, because then it's all of a sudden like Jesus is in the bedroom and God's dick makes me feel good and things get really confusing to me yeah. and I feel odd. And it reminds me of being back when I was 14 and going in for a temple recommend and my bishop asking me if I engage in heavy petting and having lots of weird feelings. Yeah. Heavy and that's what's petting. God, what a heavy weird petting. fucking term. I had no idea what he was talking about. Oh, I literally God. was I, like, I so have wait. no, like I have a dog. I pet my dog. I have <laughs> wait, no so idea he had what to heavy petting is. explain what he meant in Mormonese? Yes. Oh my God. That's yes. gotta be so uncomfortable. So can I just say, if I had been born a Mormon, I could have single-handedly destroyed the Mormon church <laughs> with my bishop interview. <laughs> right? Can we, by the way though, Still to this day, can you explain to me what heavy petting is? Is it outside of the clothes? I feel like it very much could be outside of the clothes, but I don't think that's the thing is that it's undefined, right? It's like, have you ever been to second base? Like, I don't, which, what is that to you? You know? Yeah. Well, second base is finger fucking. Is it? No. And hand, and handies. See, this is the problem with kids these days. At some point after I was on sexual bases, second base turned from grabbing a boob to handies and fingering. No, which second is base is clearly finger fucking base. and handies. No, because third base is, is oral sex. I don't know what blessed world you got to have those bases in. Plain Plain my out, Texas, baby. In, in yeah, I was going to say. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. I progressed classically. <laughs> I did. I did the classic second base, handies and 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 finger fucking, and then you've got the oral, and then you know, home run is like doing it in the, in the, in the you know what. No, bit. that's the fucked up thing though is that by the measurement that we used, at least as my interpretation when I was a kid, there was a long ways from third base to to home. Right, there was a lot of stops <laughs> along the way, so ours didn't really make sense. Yeah, that's why I don't get yours. Yeah, so yeah, right, right, exactly. To, to penetration and again this is so heteronormative it bothers me actually because there's so many other ways to have sex but i'm very unclear still about heavy petting because it's like is it finger fucking is heavy petting jerking off are we allowed to be this graphic on this podcast oh definitely oh good yes. oh, um, uh, if there's one it's encouraged if it's encouraged okay if there's one podcast that you can talk about this. <laughs> because because if heavy petting is literally just rubbing your hand on the outside of your jeans on near somebody's private parts, nobody does that. 
Okay, again, this is, you're speaking from a place of privilege, Kara. I really, <laughs> I really need you to understand that for some of us who were very, very consent conscious in high school, heavy petting was all we got, okay? And, <laughs> but even then, you would just grind on each other, and right? by that, we mean over the pants handies, yeah. No, over, over the, the pants. pants was just grind, just whole body grind. Well, yeah, exactly, exactly. For yeah. some of you, So maybe. then you're not heavy petting, you're just, you're just, your clothes fucking. Well, but so that's the thing is that it's some weird ass term for the 1940s trying to be applied <laughs> to the sexuality of today. I'm Googling. It means this. nothing right i'm yeah. googling this i have to and <laughs> these kids today i'm sure the zennials who are listening to this are like what are you talking about first base is eating ass or whatever <laughs> yeah, exactly. meme addicted tiktok <laughs> well tiktok told me that third base is when you climb inside the other person's body and live as them for a week you <laughs> kids don't know wait erotic contact between two people involving stimulation of the genitals but stopping short of intercourse so basically all Lesbian sex is heavy petting. All interactions I've had with Heath in the last two years. <laughs> <is heavy petting. laughs> we need to move forward. I've just realized yeah, right, yeah, exactly. Moving on, moving on, moving on. <laughs> Our God is an awesome <laughs> God, Ray. I wonder if anyone involved in this movie ever assumed that it would lead to this conversation, right? <laughs> and how they'd feel about it if they knew. Yeah. <laughs> Please send this to them as our, our, yeah. our um, unprovoked movie review. So, okay. So Avery and Will wander off from Our God is an Awesome God to Love Interest some more. Um, crying. So, crying hard. Now, both yeah. of them are crying well, hard. Right. Because he's all Jesus-y now. And, 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 and he's like, I, you know, I've never, I've just, I've never felt so connected to something larger than myself and, and, and my whole life. And she's like, yeah, no, it's a psychological trick we use to rope in people with depression. And then we discourage them from treating the underlying depression. And it, it worked well. <laughs> That's what's happening. Generation to generation. See, because all I wrote was, I just don't get the sexy Jesus-y vibe. I just, yeah. don't get it. I just don't think these these are two Venn diagrams that should never cross. Right. Yes, exactly. We are working yeah. at diametrically opposed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wrote, did I miss several scenes where something of meaning happened? Because these <laughs> characters are reacting like something of meaning happened. Right. And all they did was sing a song around a campfire. <laughs> right. But so, yeah. And, and what we're supposed to get from this, I assume anyway, is that this is the moment where like, he had his first experience with Christian, like with being all Jesus stuff and being oh. his, his, like he had a, a his first taste of his relationship with Christ at this point or whatever. Because we'll flash back later to the fact that he actually did stand up and sing our God is an awesome God. Eventually, mm. we don't show that in real time. We have to flash back to it. Oh, this is also where she gives him the Polaroid. Yes. Oh, right. And he's surprised. He, he's acting like he's never seen the photo and doesn't remember where it might have come from. But Polaroids weren't exactly subtle cameras. Right? No, like, they're very <laughs> loud and large, and you can only be two feet from somebody's face in order to get right. them in focus in a Polaroid. Well, and and no one has ever taken a Polaroid without immediately showing. Well, first they shake it for no goddamn reason <laughs> and fuck it up, but then they show you immediately, but way before there's an image on it, even the Polaroid they just. Uh, are you calling Outcast a liar, good sir? I'm so sorry that that joke is so fucking delayed, but I had to Google who was the creator of the song Hey Ya. Okay, we're going to cut that line. <laughs> yeah, I, I still don't get it either. <laughs> Shake it like a Polaroid picture. Yeah, Shake but it. also remember Polaroid put out a whole press release after like, don't shake it. It can actually smear the ink. Yeah, it don't whole do thing. that. You're not supposed yeah. to. Clear, yeah. Eli, everyone else went to Outcast within the first one second. If, if Andre <laughs> 3000 is wrong, I don't want to be right. And you took five minutes to get there. I, I, was, too, I, never, I was pretty, I, I was still it. hurting hey, about the heavy petting hey, conversation. Yeah. That, they should have put that in the movie. Oh, they Absolutely. could do No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That. Oh, wait, that's a real song. Yeah. Hey, um, ladies. Yeah. What's cooler <laughs> than being cool? Ice cold. No. Okay. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> I still don't even know what song we're talking about. So what? The, <laughs> Noah, do you live under a rock? Oh, Matreon, I, when it comes Matreon to music, goal. absolutely. Yeah. If if it if it came out in the last thirty years, I probably haven't yeah. heard it. Yeah. Shake Matreon it, goal. We will it, make it, Noah it, listen to "Hey Ya" by Outkast. <laughs> shake it like a Polaroid picture. Come on, man. I'll probably end up liking it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but while this conversation is going off with the Polaroid, we see bad guy Sean. Off in the darkness, plotting his revenge. Now, <laughs> again, we haven't established any 
cut. I guess he also likes Avery is the conflict. Or just doesn't like that the other guy is doing well in the Warrior games. It's never clear. Yeah, he, he, he might as well just be like, fuck, I'm the bad guy, so I must be pissed about this. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, like they told me in the script, but this is weird, but I'll go with it. Sure. Yeah. So, all right. So Will heads back to the cabin where, where George and his mom are, are chilling out. Uh, this is where he introduces everybody to his um, dead mom and dad pick. You know? Oh, but we see it right at the beginning. In his well, right, face. right. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. He introduces the characters in the movie. Yeah. But what's so funny is he's like, my parents are dead. And it's like, yeah, obviously your parents are dead. We found you at foster care. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then like, he's having this moment with Kristen. Remember Sherry Shepard mm -hmm. and like his roommate, George's mom. And he's having this moment with Kristen. And it's like a sweet, it actually kind of is like a sweet bonding moment. And then you cut to George watching them creepily and going, Oh, it's so tender. You had such a tender moment. And I'm like getting nauseated. Yeah. Like, I do not like that word. And the way he's saying it over and over is grossing me out big time. <laughs> mm. Tender, like meat. Like <laughs> tender. Like you guys have been yeah. hit with a hammer repeatedly. It's like, yeah, it's like tender, like flesh. Like I just, it's. <laughs> also, so she does this and I hate this trope so goddamn much the the mom turns to will and she's like you know your parents would be very proud of you and it's like you don't know his fucking parents lady oh, Wait, <laughs> give him a fucking break i really wanted him to be like actually my parents were white supremacists the, the fact that i was <laughs> oh, friends with your son really would have bothered <laughs> oh, them she's no. just like oh <laughs> i get why you missed the 22 foster homes now okay <laughs> well but then of course he has to put he puts his mom and dad picture right next to that polaroid picture so that we can like have the whole visual like but these friends are like his family now right with, with <laughs> oh. that little moment well because that's like in in christian worldviews and actually in like heteronormative male dominant you know patriarchal worldviews that's what women and men do right like men for example boys are raised by moms and then when moms stop raising them because they either die or the boys get older then they just marry their mom mm -hmm. yep. and then she just takes care of him for the rest of his life Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's just a recapitulation of this disgusting yeah. patriarchal. You might as well pop mom and dad out of a frame and pop Avery <laughs> exactly. into the just <laughs> cut her face off and <laughs> yeah. tape it over mom's yeah. face. Right. <laughs> like, and then sit gross. back to back with George to finish the job. So <laughs> I'm just saying it's a good time. A lot of my Matreon ideas got shot down, everybody. Yeah. I had a lot of fun <laughs> Matreon ideas. All right. So, but meanwhile, bad guy is sneaking into the office to find Will's permanent record. Oh, oh yeah. This is the only time when bad guy does anything bad. Yep. Yeah. But maybe he's doing it because he's like really empathetic and really wants to understand this kid's story. Well, I was going to say because then he doesn't like okay, so he finds out that Will is, is secretly this juvenile delinquent that's been in so much trouble or whatever, but he doesn't like leave that information in public for everyone to find or anything. Right. This no. trope is so easy. Hey, everybody, Will's a hooligan. He takes Will aside and privately is like, hey, man, you shouldn't be lying about who you are to Avery. And we're supposed to be like, that son of a bitch. <laughs> I know, really, he's just like being a good friend. He's like, listen, relationships based on lies never really blossom. Yeah. Like, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot here, man. Just tell her the truth. Right, She'll like yeah. you anyway. <laughs> you know what's villainous behavior? Letting a felon who's lying to your friend and a girl you like continue to do so because he hasn't revealed that information voluntarily. Right. I love this kid. He's my yeah. favorite. Team villain. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. They need to do like a Cobra Kai remake of this where we yes. redeem this guy. Yeah. So, okay. Oh, also, I have to point this line out too because like this whole scene starts with more camp announcements from David Keshner and he's talking about the big talent show that's coming up. He's like, don't forget, guys, the best thing we could think of to end the movie with was the big talent show we've been talking about. So he says, and I quote, warm up those juggling balls, polish off those tap shoes, and let's make some magic. Now, I know I was very proud when he brought up juggling balls as Eli was very proud when he brought up magic. <laughs> Kara, I'm dying to know, do you by any chance tap dance? Of course not. Oh, damn it. Oh. Okay. We could have got the fucking try. If only Josh Gad was here. God damn it. I refuse to be in your nerd trifecta. <laughs> Oh, no, I don't tap 
She tap dances. She's just afraid. She's afraid of her truth. <laughs> I did. Wait, wait. I was a baton twirler. I think that's worse. Oh, fuck that's so yeah. much worse. <laughs> fuck yeah. How dare you as a baton twirler look down on a tap dancer? <laughs> I'm not looking down on the tap dancer. I'm looking down on your juggling balls and your magic there you go. Although, yeah, exactly. <laughs> to be clear, I have actually hired Eli to do magic at an event I ran. So yeah. I'm into it. Yeah, that's did true. not hire a juggler. So anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> there are, there's a certain line. I just... <laughs> <laughs> Right. So, but, but we have that little setup for the talent show. Bad guy comes in and he's like, Hey, man, if you don't tell Avery that you're a bad boy, which women hate, they just hate bad boys. I'm going to tell her myself because I'm friends with her. Oh, and he lists, he lists all of the things he read about. He's like, yeah. multiple curfew violations. <laughs> oh, was that in there? Yeah. yeah. That's the first thing he brings up. He goes, multiple curfew violations. And Will's like, damn it. I never thought that would get out. Yeah, and vandalism. <laughs> They're all just like the lamest things yeah, exactly. he's ever gotten. Into. He's like, you got a jaywalking ticket you never paid. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, but that's enough for Will, right? Will's like, oh, now I have to leave this camp. They know my sort of jaywalking history at this <laughs> so point. They'll stupid. never accept me now. So he's got a lot. He wanders off. And now George has to find him because they need him for their big talent show. They're going to do his song at the talent show. They're fucked. Team Green is fucked if they can't find him. But lo and Bill, he's back at the cabin packing his shit to go. Right? Yep. Yeah. So, so Will wanders off. He's, he's hitchhiking away while they're trying to like, you know, figure out what bad guy said to him to, to set him off. Now, I will say this. If Will had gotten murdered while hitchhiking because he was running away from camp, that's pretty funny. That's a pretty good twist on the movie. I don't know about funny, but it would be a good twist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Some of us were rooting harder against Will for than others. Wait, and now it's nighttime again, even though it was just morning. <laughs> yes. <Yep. laughs> yes. <laughs> So well, he had a lot of shit to pack in that guitar case. <laughs> yeah. The sun just really whirs around in this universe. It's it's pretty crazy. So yeah, so but Avery wanders off to try to find Will. She can't find him, and he didn't even take the fucking Polaroid, that asshole. Son of a bitch. So she goes to her dad, and she says, Hey, Dad, I, your teenage daughter, would like to borrow your car and drive off to go find a boy that I have a crush on. I must do this alone. And he's like, yeah, okay. No, makes yeah, here you go. There's the keys. Right? I'm a Christian and I would do that. Yeah, this kid clearly wasn't sentenced to be here and is now on the land. Right. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> you know that guy who stole a Grand Theft Auto and then he came here? I would like to go be alone with him in the middle of the woods because he's broken the rules. And dad's just like, well, sounds good to me. Have yeah. fun, honey. Right. Yeah, go, go have some unprotected sex. <laughs> Let me know if you do any heavy petting. I mean, let yeah. me know what it is if you find out. <laughs> I, I, I've been trying to figure it out with George's mom, and it's crazy. We, we're wearing sumo suits and running at each other as fast as we can. <laughs> also, at this point, I'm really confused as to what kind of musical this is, because there hasn't been a musical number in a really long time. Right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, this movie, like, selectively remembered it was going for musical. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but so she drives off. She catches up with him because, you know, obviously he's... He's hitchhiking like that long ass road. If you've ever been to any fucking camp, you know, there's that one long ass road that leads to nowhere but that camp. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he's trying to hitchhike his way out of it. Like, no, dude, it would all just be people from the camp. And he's walking really slow. Like, he's still at camp, basically. He's still yeah, there. Right. But, right. oh, th we left an important part out. When she goes to look for him in his room and realizes he's packed up all his stuff, he had left the photo behind. What a dick. Right. Why did he do that? So he's. He's concerned that the guy outed him. And so now this girl is going to think poorly of him and not like him anymore. How does that affect how much he likes her? Wouldn't he still want the photo? Right. And then she shows up and she's like, I just found out about your sordid past and I don't care. And he's still upset. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is he? What is the conflict now? I don't know. But what I love is that now he has like a proper crisis of faith and he's saying all the right things. He's like going down all the right reasoning. Like what kind of God allows kids to have their parents killed and then sends them to foster care? Agree. Yeah. Not not a good one. 
Right, and and the movie's just like you know, I borrowed my dad's car keys, uh, so jingle, 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 uh, jingle, <laughs> yeah, jingle. and then he's like, ooh. <laughs> it's like my one weird eyebrow yeah. <laughs> crazy oh my god and this is the best worst part of the whole movie why wasn't this my best worst best worst montage of things that just happened 30 seconds ago yeah oh my god they do it twice right like he remembers the movie twice within the span of four minutes it's so the whole fucking weird. movie yep. takes place over the span of like two or three days you can't do a memory montage of things that happened <laughs> two or three days ago one of which they actually include something that happened literally 30 seconds before that yep yeah no it, that's I, that's actually i think if i'm not mistaken a, a spot on the ga- official gam bingo card is flashback to thing that happened 18 seconds ago in the movie <laughs> but yeah she's like i forgive you for being uh, for lying to me about who you are and he's like but i'm still angry for some reason she's like well i don't get that at all so i'm leaving so she leaves but she gives him the picture. She like yeah. pushes it against his chest in that sexy Jesusy way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, "Well, fuck! Even if I was going to leave, I should have at least gotten her to drive me to the end of this long ass <laughs> camp road. This was <laughs> oh. nothing I made." But then he has an epiphany song, right? Yeah. Oh, right. There is a song here. Well, and, yeah. and and I knew I, I knew right away that we were back to the original songs by the movie's makers at this point because this song rhymed along and belong. <laughs> it was like the main <laughs> rhyme of it. And I'm like, yep, yeah, yep. that's what I've come to expect from you guys. You you <laughs> ran out of Amy Grant shit, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Only had the one. Only had the one. <laughs> but yeah, so he sings his epiphany song. He flashes back again to everything that just happened impressive impressive flashback following flashback timing yeah oh my god so bad he's like flashing back to himself walking about three feet earlier <laughs> down the road and i'm starting to get confused like is this a memento kind of yeah, movie exactly. are they just really switching gears on me <laughs> he's got that thing in his pocket that tells him that he's actually lucid dreaming or whatever. <laughs> it's like jack <laughs> Looks down at his stomach. Go win talent show. Okay. Oh, wait, okay. All right, yeah. so, well, and there we go. It's time for the big talent show. And bad guy sure is. We cut to the end of bad guys. Sean's performance and he's crushing it. So blue is winning now. Okay. I just want to point out how stupid this is. Up until now, they've had games that have scores and clear winners and losers. And they're going to end the whole fucking thing on just arbitrarily assigning points based on a talent show? Yeah. Well, yeah. The judge might as well be Dumbledore. <laughs> well, nope. <laughs> but even worse, one of the judges clearly is the father of the girl who's captain of Team Red. The other judge is the mother of the captain of Team Green. I wonder why Team Blue loses. <laughs> <laughs> I love that this is what you guys are actually focusing on. <laughs> well, no, I was focusing on the fact that all of the extras in the scene have the thumbs that I used to sell. <laughs> oh, really? The little thumb lights? <laughs> they all have thumb lights. And I was like, man, that's a pretty big sale. I wonder where they got those. <laughs> that's what I was doing during this part of the movie. I was like, oh, man, that's like six or seven pairs that they got for this whole cast is pretty cool there you go (laughs) i'm freaking out about the fact that he came back he came back for no reason there are no stakes nothing about this movie makes sense nothing happens it's like you can't just write kids as orphans and expect that to be all of the stakes of the film right yeah Yeah, exactly there there has and you can't just have two characters standing there and yelling conflict at one another without establishing what they're even talking about Mm hmm. So but yeah, so like Team Green is about to go on stage and they're very nervous because they can't win without Will. But but now he's back and he's so much worse of a singer than George that it's like, oh, well, that's a shame. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a bummer. And this is the song that bummed me out the hardest because this is called This is the Best Thing Ever. And like, oh. it's very much like this camp and us like si- having our arms around each other singing like this is the best thing ever. This is the best thing ever. And my whole notes are just like, I mean, no one who made this movie has had their dick sucked on Molly. So I really feel like you guys aren't in a place to talk. Just. One of the lyrics is, this is what life is all about. My notes just say, Jesus, imagine if that were true. <laughs> 
oh god, it, the lyrics are so insipid and banal. It, the, the literal fucking chorus is them saying over and over again, "This is the best thing ever." Like Jesus Christ. Yeah, and so and to be clear, at this point they're singing and blah blah blah, but they've kissed already. Yes, uh-huh. they kissed. We left out. That's oh yeah, supposed because, to be yeah. 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 The most that's important. how invested I was in this love yeah. interest. <laughs> he comes back. They kiss. There's like fireworks or something. There's glow sticks. I don't know. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, got to go sing my song. Runs up. They're crying. Like they both cry too much. So Bad crying. guy sighs. That's the extent of his aggression. Yeah. Uh-huh. And yeah. then like he's like a microscopically bad bad guy like he's barely bad because then they start singing this is the best thing ever day ever whatever and he's like rocking along now he's like i'm in it yeah Yeah. he's like well this (laughs) song is pretty darn catchy yeah Yeah. it's it's so fucking boring i wrote my notes i'm like he might as well be singing about his favorite kind of sandwich but then i was like no because that song would at least have some guts you know yeah but yeah, but but their song is so good that Team Green wins after all, and Team Blue sucks. They just fucking suck objectively as human beings. <laughs> <laughs> who is judging this? What were they being judged on? It, it, uh, who sung the longest wait, song? Who wait, is the most protagonist? We didn't see any of the other things. No, no, uh, no, no. We didn't <laughs> they might have sucked more. <laughs> well, I, I guess that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> But the thing is, is that this stupid ass movie is desperately trying to find a way to work in songs and then it skips the last song from Team Red and Team Blue. Like, come on, guys. <laughs> and so Verdes Maximus, that's what their team name was. Oh, Verdes. that's right. Verdes Maximus. Maximum what? Green. Like the other ones were like religious. Jesus-y names. Yeah, yeah the, the Blue Azure Apostles. Angels and the Crimson or the Azure Crim- Apostles yeah. and the Crimson Angels. Yeah. And, and then Verdes Maximus. Yeah. What? Okay. <laughs> Latin okay, cool. counts. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> All right, so now it's it's time for that final morning of Jesus camp, and everybody sure did have fun. And bad guy has now seen the error of his ways and promises to be good guy from now on. <laughs> what was his arc? I wanted Will to just be like, I mean, you really weren't that much of a conflict to the movie. There wasn't a lot at stake at any point. And he's like, yeah, no, that's fair. All right. I'm going to go do more <laughs> environmental work, which is what villainized me in the first place. Yeah, yeah. And then George goes off and like, I don't know, talks to Presley and and there's yeah. no stakes there either because she's like, I've been clearly telegraphing to you this whole time that I'm into you. Yeah. And he gives her a box of 365 letters which is way creepier than a box full of heads. <laughs> totally. It's like, and here's some of your hair. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well that's, I, I, I so wanted it to play like more realistically where he sits down and he's like, hey, I, I finally got the guts to talk to you. And she's like, oh, good, because I'm really into you. And he's like, here's a letter I've written for you for every day of the year. And she's like, I'm less into you now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And she backs away slowly. Right. But this is a Christian movie. So she responds, I'm going to marry you. Oh, God. And then he goes, should I emoji her? When is this movie? (laughs) Where where on the scale from first base to heavy petting is emoji on someone? (laughs) Negative 12th base. This is a different different game. We need a zen. The adapted version of baseball. Lemon, lemon. We're all too old on this podcast. We need some youngsters to let us know. No, youngsters, you remember, first base for youngsters is like anal play. That's yeah, right. not, we can't yeah, use exactly. youngsters for this. They'll no. know where emoji in goes. Yeah. So <laughs> Oh, and then and just in case this movie wasn't kitschy enough for you, then fucking Kristen, George's mom, comes and says, Will, I know you're 17, but I'm gonna adopt you and you're gonna be my son now. And he's like, Wow, a mom. <laughs> And they're like, so we really are cousins now. And she's like, no, you're brothers, because that's how this works. <laughs> yeah, I would be his mom. That's I yeah. don't why would you think cousin? That would be weird. <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah, so that they do another they reprise the song that they just fucking sung, which is weird. Very and weird. And then we get the amazing blooper reel. And it's not even like mostly it's not even a legit blooper reel. They're just singing another song that has nothing to do with anything. Yep. In order to trick me into watching the credits. (laughs) (laughs) But this is where we get my favorite part of the movie, which is where David Ketcher in all of his bloopers is like, keep rolling. We're losing the fucking light. (laughs) It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, He was clearly uh, seeing his lines for the first time that day. (laughs) Yeah. 
All right. So and that's the end of the movie. I have one question to wrap it up at the Puzzle in a Thunderstorm summer camp that starts at noon that we're starting. What will you guys be doing for the talent show? Ooh, um, making fun of Kara's baton. Ooh, twirling that baton. Sweet. I was I was Double so ready X. for you to say tap dance. I set you up for it, but that's fine. <laughs> I know. All right. Well, Kara, thank you so much for joining us today. It's always a blast to have you on. Thanks. And well, that's going to do it for our review of a week away. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to roll this boulder back up to the top of the hill again. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, next week is our 300th episode. Yeah. Uh, so I've saved us something special. If I may read you a description. It is the year 2025. Since the outbreak of the coronavirus in 2020, the world has not been the same. A communist system with a single world government has been established. English has been chosen as the world language. Contacts have been reduced to a minimum. Christianity has been banned completely. The constitution how we knew it no longer exists. In Germany, a small group of young Christians start an underground revolution to reunite Christians and regain freedom. We'll be watching 2025, The World Enslaved by a Virus. God damn it. <laughs> is this at least somebody I've heard of who did it, or is it just just no, some oh, Eastern European jackass? Oh, God damn it. All right. So with that, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you just had a little musical, and George actually had a lovely singing voice. God damn it. All right. So with that, to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 299 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Kara for hanging out with us. Be sure to check the show notes for links to hear more from her. She's got a lot of awesome stuff all over the internet, and we have it linked. And of course, a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. Remember, it's Patreon. You can be a part of that. So if you'd like to count yourself among the ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Ride, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot, Nico People Drops on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Avery and Will get married, have a bunch of kids, and live out their miserable lives tragically. Meanwhile, George and Presley have hot sex and tons of fun, and I'm just generally jealous of their awesome lives. <laughs> Will went on to sell Kristen's house on Craigslist. <laughs> George was shot 46 times during next year's paintball game. Oh, God. I've been mic'd a little high this whole fucking time and, and I'm just now noticing it. So <laughs> it's kind of funny that I've been giving you shit the entire time. There we go. <laughs> How the turntables have well done. Rotated. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle in a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.